Lovely. And then, well, I check it. 94. All right. I did everything else and I forgot the mic. Um, we're going to be on for three hours today because it's Tuesday. I'm always on 8 to 11. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 9 to 11. Tuesday, 8 to 11. Thursday, 5 to 7. 6 to 9 Saturday. 5 to 9 Sunday. That's every day. You got it. Karen just finished streaming. Spencer helped her out a little bit. She finally got to 200 subs. She applied for partner last week, so she should find out next week if they accept her or not. She's met all the requirements, so they say yes or no. And um, I think she has about 4,000 followers, so that's pretty good. <clears throat> we were discussing, and by we, I mean uh, we weren't discussing it at all. I was just pointing it out. We were discussing earlier, me and Karen, whether she was the oldest chess streamer for either sex and whether she was the oldest female streamer on Twitch of everyone. And so far, we haven't refuted that. Now, somebody said Spielman, who's a lot older than Karen, but I don't know if I call him a streamer. Maybe he streams once a month. If he streams once a week, I'll give it to him. But if he streams like 10, 20 times a year, that's, I wouldn't consider that a streamer. Although, I, I guess. So, um, Karen's rating with a party of 58. Yay, now we have viewers. So, well, the, the question is, you know, most of the women who stream on Twitch, and most of the men, are in their 20s. So it's even hard to find women in their 30s and 40s who stream on Twitch. And it's hard to find women who have heard of Twitch who are in their 50s, as AOC has pointed out, uh, men and women. We, we were surprised. Um, actually, what happened was, let me refresh, because I want to, you know, in case there's a train. Hey! Hey! What? Right. Um, so, w uh, we never realized, and by we, I mean me, I never real like, I always say that everybody's really dumb, but I never realized how ignorant people were. Like, I understand people are dumb, but ignorant, like, confused me. So, let me give you an example. When we lived in St. Louis, right? Yeah. We assumed incorrectly mm -hmm. go way way up because there's people looking here okay. way way up way way up oh that's better Ooh. Mm -hmm. way, way up uh -huh. we, we assumed everybody in the united states heard of the st louis arch yeah no like less than half the people have so like like krista hadn't heard of it and nobody's heard of it and a lot of people like know what it is they're like oh i what's that like i've seen that mm -hmm. and they think like mcdonald's owns it you know what's funny is mcdonald's does own it Oh, really? No. Oh. <laughs> okay. Now, for a trillion dollars, what's that called? The no. St. Louis Arch, what's that area called? Um, I'm not sure. It's the Jefferson Memorial Monument nonsense. Mm. And under the arch, there's a museum. Like I've for been Thomas. In. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then if you go up, then. I've gone up. No, there's a good reason to go up. It's, it's not good to go up, but there's a reason. Mm -hmm. The reason is. You will find out immediately, you will find out whether you're claustrophobic or not. Mm -hmm. If you go up and go down, you're like, that was no problem. You are not claustrophobic. So if you thought you were claustrophobic, this is your chance to find out. And they told me occasionally, once every year or two, the thing breaks. Mm. So when the thing's going up and it breaks, which happens, it happens, you get out and you have to walk one way or the other. Mm. So that's the most fun you can have. There's stairs there. But they don't use the stairs unless the thing breaks, which it does. Did we go up in it too? I went with my kids, and I, that's when I first met you. And I, was I think you went without me. I went up with Aaron. But did Aaron. we go again? I don't know. Oh. Um, um, hey, everybody. Yes, yeah, St. Louis is known for the Arch, but... the Chess Club, Forest Park, which may be the best park in the country. But now she's going to get all Philadelphia on me. Flip, 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 Philadelphia. What's the Philadelphia one called? Wait, you're at Fairmount Park? Or yeah, yeah. The, that's the park. Yeah, that's the one of them more than one park there. Well, that's, that's the best. That's, that's the park. It's big, yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Fairmount Park is good. And then there's also, they're known for baseball because their baseball team is always good. Now they all have COVID. And uh, they're also known for alcohol. If you want to get a beer and you're in St. Louis, you're in the right place because every place has beer, right? I... I was on some side street in the middle of nowhere and I just knocked on this person's house and they said, we only have seven kinds of beer because we're out of one. And I was like, wow. 
Okay. Hey, D-Rush Nani. So, yeah, South Park is the best show ever. What's that got to do with anything we were talking about? That's right, the world championship there in the 1800s. Wrath of Gods, you know, mm-hmm. I'm the better one to ask about that. No, you have to ask me. <laughs> no. <laughs> they have a lot of stuff there. They got the Scott Joplin house, which I never went to. Mm-hmm. Output Coupler subscribed. Tier 2. Yay, Output. Yay, now we can retire. Tier 2. Okay, so let's go to the squares. I have so many subs now. 200 subs. Thank you, guys. Let's see. Get rid of that. Okay. So today we're going to be on Chess TV in about 52 minutes. I mean, in theory, in practice, you know, mm-hmm. fuck cards. All right. So um, I have Endgame lesson prepared for today, which is the opposite of what Spencer did. Yay. It's opposite day. Hey, Cali Gambler. Yeah. I stayed at the casino. Yeah, they have a lot of casinos in St. Louis, St. Charles, and across the river in East St. Louis area. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, there's one good thing about East St. Louis, and you're never going to figure out what it is because, you know, there's nothing good about it. Um, In fact, I'm not even sure it's East St. Louis. That's that's how. Anyway, the casino there, the Casino Queen, because it's in Illinois, by Illinois law, non-smoking. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, Now, when I first went to St. Louis before you guys were born... And also in the Illinois one, those are the only casinos in the world I've seen that close. Well, I think in Europe they might close. But I live in the U.S., so I'm not used to casinos closing. But they close. And then they stopped closing because that's stupid. And now they close like three hours a, a, a week to clean it or something. I don't know. Now I assume they're all closed because of COVID. Mm-hmm. I mean, St. Louis, they probably just don't care. Yeah. Um, escalator turns into stairs. Poor kid. I'm sponsor's father and sponsor's mother. She's not sponsor's mother, but she is bonder's mother. Hey, the lonely Joey. And does anybody get the bonder joke except for, you know, uh, mm-hmm. Archer gets it. But. Bonder? Bender? What? Right. Oh. Reggie. Oh. I knew okay, it like they're bender. flying as fast as they can in space. Okay. And they shoot Bender out of a torpedo chute okay. by accident. Mm-hmm. So now they made up this, they made something up based on entropy, you know. They, not uh, What's it called? Uh, when you keep going. Not, not entropy, the other word. Inertia? Inertia. So they made up something saying that since they shot him out of the thing and they were going as fast as they can go, they could never get him. Okay, but anyway, they had to do it for the show. Okay. So they, that's it. Bender's gone. They can't catch him. He's going faster. Aww. So they go back to Earth, and Fry's trying to get him. And Fry goes to some machine where they read your fortune. And he's like, can we ever get Bender? And he says, oh, your friend Bonder is gone forever. And he says, wait a minute. And he's like, really says, wait a minute. He says, his name is not, not Bonder, it's Bender. And then she goes, what, what do you want from me? Am I supposed to be a genie? Oh, wait, never mind. Look, you want false hope or what? That's what she said. Oh. He's like, yeah. Okay. Then he goes to the religious guy. And he says, can we get Bender? And the guy says, well, I can pray for you. And then he says, can you do anything for me that's useful? And the guy says, no. Uh-huh. Anyway, eventually they get him back because Bender becomes God. Then Bender meets God. And then God sends him back to Earth. Mm-hmm. It's complicated. It sounds... Yeah. You know. Anyway, when he called him sponsor, I thought a bonder because it was same same mistake. Okay, uh, yeah. Then I don't know that that's right. Yeah, his his time. conversation with God was pretty funny. Mark's paraphrasing. Uh. Yeah. Well, let's see. My good chum, that is correct. Yeah, God was explaining to Bender: if you do too much, they rely on God. If you do nothing, they don't believe in you. It says you have to have a light touch, like a safe cracker. That's how he explained it to Bender. A safe crack. Yeah, oh, you get a, oh, light, you get a oh, light touch. Yeah. Yeah, God's explaining how he's God. You know, you gotta, you know. All right. Bender's a good character. Uh, God is voiced by Billy West. That is funny. Okay. So we're going to look at some end games I played over the last million years. Those are the end games. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, a lot of end games I've already shown you a billion times. These end games I've only shown you a million times, so you forgot. Okay. And I have 13 examples because that's lucky. Although I didn't actually know where to start, so I didn't set them up properly. 
Okay, so I go to this, and I go to that, 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 and I go to this. And then I have to figure out where to start. I'm going to start, where am I going to start? Okay, I know where I'm going to start. Yeah, we're going to start here. Yeah. Okay, so... This, I have a long, boring story. Okay. As you know, in 1984, I went to Moscow. Mm -hmm. Now, what you may not know, well, you guys don't know, but she probably does. In 84, the United States and Russia, they weren't so friendly. Mm -hmm. So going to Moscow was very difficult. It was for a chess seminar, and we had to get a U.S. senator to, like, get me a visa. But we did, and I was 14. And... People were very impressed that I went to Moscow for chess because I was a little kid. So the governor of Michigan made a proclamation or wrote me a letter saying I'm the greatest. His name's James Blanchard. Okay. And the Michigan State Senate wrote a proclamation, whereas Ben Feingold did this and that. Okay. And at the 1984 Michigan Open, which is always Labor Day weekend, like many state championships, not George's, and the Chess seminar, the picture there that you've seen a million times, mm -hmm. that was in August, and the Michigan Open was in September, although it could have been August, September. Could have. And state senator named Jack Faxon showed up in a suit and tie to, like, give me the proclamation. I didn't know he was showing up, so I had on shorts and a T-shirt, mm -hmm. and he was miffed. I dressed like, you know, I was homeless. Okay. And then he read saying, I'm the greatest, and you're the and you're a Michigan ambassador and Michigan State Senate, and everybody clapped. Okay. Turned out, even though I was 14, I was the highest rated player in the tournament. It was the state championship. I lost round one to Rufus, and I lost round two to Doofus. So I was zero out of two. Mm -hmm. I showed, I don't know what I showed, showed something. Anyway, this game is from that tournament. Since I had zero out of two, my last few opponents were not, not very good. All right, this guy's like 1,300, maybe. Maybe. Okay, maybe I'm, maybe he's not 1,300. Maybe he's less. And okay. people are giving some stuff. Thank you for the 100 cent to do, Squishy Hercules. Yeah, you're you're the best. That's and right, 10 cent to do. Okay. thank you for so the this. So this guy's like, this guy's like 12, 1,300, and I'm like 2,250. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm losing the whole game. <laughs> no, I'm not losing. Okay, now I always wondered, and I still wonder, this position is great. So even though I played, this is the only game I've ever played the, uh, what's that stupid gambit called? Uh, the Cochrane Gambit, there it is. I played the Cochrane Gambit in the Petrov. You don't want to know what that is. <clears throat> so you sack a piece and you get compensation. And I was lost the whole game. I got no compensation. And then eventually I wasn't lost. And now I'm trying to win. I can't lose. So. Okay, this position I always wondered if I showed it to grandmasters or super grandmasters if they could play this correctly. It's really hard. Mm -hmm. This so this is this is for you. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> obviously Black's trying to draw since he can't legally win. Okay. Black to play and draw. You have one move that draws. Every other move loses. <sighs> he didn't do that, so I got like three queens or four queens. Yeah, four queens. Black sure. to play and draw. Right. That's right. I almost met Tigran Petrosian, but he was sick and I overslept. Yeah. I won my last five games, seven round tournament, but I won no prize money and I lost like 30 rating points. Because the people I lost to were like 500, 600 points lower than me. It wasn't a good start. The, the five games that I won, I was losing at least three of them. At least. Very suspicious master. Now, I'm really hot, but it could be because I eat food. Pretty quiet stream. <laughs> did you get that wrong? You did get that wrong. Yeah. 
I'm hot because Karen's beauty radiates. Squishy Hercules said that. <laughs> uh, let's see. This seems hard. That's correct. I'll explain which move is right and why after you invest the right move. Should I keep looking? I'm happy to keep looking at it. Yeah, you can, whatever you want to do. Well, I mean, you know. Whatever you want to do. Talk to people. and. Yeah, they're not saying much. They're They're looking also. They're wondering why I'm so hot. I mean, I'm nonstop sweating here. You think, did you you always turn it off and then when it's still off? It doesn't seem that hot. I didn't didn't touch it. You think it's great in here, right? It's a little warm. Yeah. But um, let's see. Who is Karen? Oh. All right, let me just. <laughs> is it a tate? Interesting spelling of blockade. Yeah. Is it a tate? It spells it like Rite Aid, but blockade. Ooh, somebody texted me. Mm. Uh, nice. That was like a C minus uh, trying to learn that joke. C minus. <laughs> yeah. You should have got spelling lessons from somebody's mom. Yeah, I just, I don't know. This one's too hard for me. No, you can suggest a move. Okay, that's true. Um,. Okay, well, I would say, oh, actually, I don't have to do three moves for that. Uh, Maybe um, Bishop F4. Okay, Bishop F4 is reasonable. Sue Beethoven subscribed. Fortunately, there's only one move that draws. Mm-hmm. Two things you want to do. You want to move your king t- towards this side of the board. Mm-hmm. Okay? So, you know, here, here, here. And in the instance where an A pawn is queening, either because black took, and then I took, and then I'm queening my A pawn, or because I took and I'm queening my A pawn, you have to be able to go to this diagonal with your bishop because your king can't get there in time. Mm-hmm. Well, you can't go here. Right. If you go here, you can't go here. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you get here. I guess you lose like seven tempi and your king's still here, so that's no good. So if you play bishop f8, which was suggested by the audience, mm-hmm. and I play, for example, king c4, for example, then you're not, you're, you're not getting to that diagonal, and I'm gaining a tempo by moving my king up here to help my pawns. So the only move that draws, which about three people pointed out, yeah. right? but they're guessing, they don't know. Or yeah. they're using an engine they do know. They, no, they don't know, they're they guessing. They might know. No, they don't know. They, I, I bet they, they do. Grandmasters don't know. No, they know if they're using an engine. <laughs> they're like, my guess is this, because they don't know. Okay. And the only move that draws is king f3, which he didn't play. What king f3 does is it moves its king here, which is good, mm-hmm. and it lets you play bishop e3. Now, what's important is... If, if black trades pawns first, that doesn't work. The reason is, if white can play a5, b5, white's going to win. White can't play a5. So if white plays b5, since he can't move his a pawn, the bishop is really well placed here to prevent the pawns from moving. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then it's the same thing if you take. The bishop you know, gets to go here, and if you go here, I just go here. <coughs> Obviously, white's not winning now. Okay, so king f3 is the only drawing move. And I'm wondering in a tournament game if most strong grandmasters would find that. I don't know. Okay, 
He took on B4, now he's lost. And, and now this doesn't work because I, I got the two pass pawns. I can move up. And they're the ones that are really far away. And he played bishop f4. And now this is another. This is a key move I'm going to ask you. Okay, a5. He moved his bishop, which stops my pawns. So I, if I go here, the bishop locks. And if I go here, I'm hanging. So now I want to move my king. What's the best king move? I'm not saying every king move doesn't win. But what's the best one that's the most accurate so you show your understanding. Okay. We'll have to look again. Mm -hmm. Deep think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure they all win. But the one is is the move you play because you show understanding. Mm -hmm. all right, let me look. What's going on here? All right, I'll read the chat. Question mark. Double X clam. Triple X clam. I have 1,800 subs, I have 50,000 followers, Papa John's, it says. Ben Feingold Hart is the correct answer. I like the distant opposition answer, that was funny. What? Hmm? Why is it funny? I thought it was funny. Where do I get my Perrier from Amazon? I want the most evil possible. I wonder if GM Feingold is in the chat. No. Hey. I mean, it doesn't seem like it's hard to win. Okay. But I don't know. I would say King C4. Okay. So what you want to do is move your king up. Mm -hmm. And then what you also want to do to stop your opponent from doing what they want to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here it probably doesn't matter, but it could definitely matter in other positions that are similar. So most people got the right answer because they know similar. So if you were black in this position, what would you do? If you were black. Um, which, which piece would you move? If you had the black pieces. Uh, king. King. And you're moving your king to the F file, then the E file, then the D file. And if you can get to like one of these squares, then you're, you know, you're probably going to draw. Mm -hmm. And if your king's hanging around here, then you're probably not going to draw. So what move should white play to prevent black from doing that? From moving to... Moving his king, king over F5. to where, that's right. From moving king f5 or king f4, or king f3 mm -hmm. towards, the, you know, this. King D4? Close. Uh, King E4? Obviously. Uh, it stops this. It's not that obvious to me. It does. It stops it. I, I stopped it. Okay. Yeah. It wasn't that, it's just not that obvious to me. Right. If you go here, you can go to all three of those squares. So I know, you, but you can still move up and shoulder him away. Right. Well, you're already shouldering him. Right. Right. And as we've discussed, when we were in the car driving back from your mom's like three years ago mm -hmm. or two years ago, depending on your opinion of it, because I don't remember, there's the puzzle Holden solved where the king goes from E1 to E8. Remember that? Just the empty king on the board. You mean how many different ways? That's right. Yeah. And this is the same idea. So this will surprise you, but it won't surprise you unless it surprises you. If your king wants to go here, right? Okay. Uh, the, the, this is just as quick as that. And it doesn't look like it is. It looks like you're moving away from it, mm -hmm. but you're not. Okay. Y you go to this row, then you go to this row, then you go to this row, then you go to this row, and then you go to this row, right? Mm -hmm. Well, this then they're all the same. So if I want to go to A8, for example, this is one way to do it. That takes five moves, and this takes five moves. 
even though that looks quicker. So every move is the same regarding getting your king to these important squares. But to stop my opponent's king, this move is the one that stops him right away. Now, this position, it doesn't matter, but there are many positions in King Umpon Endings where that's the only winning move because you're moving towards yeah. the queen's side, but you're stopping the king from coming. So you have to do that. And I could set up thousands of positions where the only winning move is to do something that looks really dumb like mm -hmm. that, but you have to do it. Okay. And so I play king e4, and then uh, all right, let's, I get like seven queens. Okay, and he resigned because I go there. Yay. Now if we go back to the beginning, we turn on the engine, right? It says king f3 is a draw, right? Mm -hmm. And then it says plus a trillion if you do anything else. And what I'm wondering is... Um, would super GMs in a slow game find that move usually, always, occasionally? I don't know. I don't know how easy that is. Like, I don't think it's easy. But you have to move your king this direction, and you have to be able to play bishop e3. The king f4 blocks the bishop. Now, of course, this guy's 1300, so... Somebody did something. Yeah, so he, he can't play king f3. He's not allowed to. Soul Khan subscribed. Yeah. So it's funny, like, this game didn't matter. I already ruined my tournament. This guy was a 1,000 points lower than me. But we got this good lesson for the next 30 years. <laughs> or 36 years. It was like 36 years ago. We're out of focus. Oh, yeah, we are out of focus. Wave your hand in front of me. Oh, yeah. Ugh. All right, now we're in focus. No. Well, I didn't wave my hand yet. I... That didn't help. You have to hold it there for a minute. I do. I think right. it did work. But... All right. Yeah, I think it's fine. <laughs> Yay, sick mofo gave 10 subs. That actually looks better. Yeah, that does look better. Yeah. I Now, this is weird. I've talked to some doctors about this. Yay, sick mofo. And they told me they didn't want to see me anymore. I didn't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. But I told doctors about this, and they said that I look better out of focus. So, mm -hmm. Sick Yay. mofo gifted... Wait, what did he do? Seems like I have No, no, look, look, look what he did. What? He gifted 10... Look what he did. He gifted 10... Stop it. Two tier two subs. What? I've never seen that. Was that an accident? It's a happy accident. <laughs> yeah, even this guy point. He's like, wait. I've never seen anybody donate more than one of a tier two or three sub. Aww, Thank you. Yay. Now they can put a knife F5. Yeah. If you were just donated a tier two sub, you have the knife F5 available to you. Like the mods do. Thank you, Sick Mofo. I yeah. feel like I haven't seen. Uh, he says mm -hmm. he can neither confirm nor deny. I have not seen you in a mm -hmm. while. I don't feel like that I have. But thank you. Now, let me ask the chat because the chat is full of super intelligent people. You yeah. know where they found most people in the chat to be so, so intelligent? You know where they found them? They were in a Three Stooges jury. The jury in the in those Three Stooges episodes, yeah. they found, yeah. Uh, they made fun of the jury once in one of the episodes. So this fine and intelligent jury, then they showed, <laughs> they showed a jury that wasn't too smart. Forehead. Luckily, the, the juries in Three Stooges movies don't have to make any rulings. The, the trial always ends in a farce before anything happens and the episode mm -hmm. just ends. They've never, they've never They've never gone into deliberations. Disorder in the court. <laughs> Yay. Thanks, sick mofo. That's never so nice. Into, yeah, that's right. I even Forehead is correct. Accident. Thank you. Donate multiple months. Yeah, nobody does that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, now, hey uh, Dr. Chessarex, a.k.a. Thadosaurus. That's correct. <laughs> we banned yet? Okay. So so here's my question to the chat. Um, do you think if you were watching, you know, like two GMs playing in some slow tournament that they would play king f3 all the time, some of the time, or probably not. What's your opinion? I don't know, because I'm not very good, and it wasn't obvious to me. But 50-50, trying to learn all the time, yeah. <laughs> it ain't all the time, yeah. Either they would or they wouldn't, that is correct. Most of the time. Most of the time. They would find it all the time in a slow game. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Super GMs are wizards. <laughs> Uh, you're too stooges to know. <laughs> yeah. 
Anyway, yeah, he, he I got two queens against him. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, luckily, I was on the side that didn't have to find any good moves. By the way, that's one of my fears. And I have very few fears in chess. Obviously, spiders and stuff. Okay, and that roach is still taking the longest nap ever. All right. I'm hoping he dies. Well, he hasn't moved. I've had him before. He hasn't moved in three days and when he's you, alive? When you, I don't know. When you go and touch one, all of a sudden they come. After three days? <laughs> wow. Come, he's been there for three days in the same I, position. I'm the roach killer in the uh, family. But anyway, here's the one thing I'm afraid of. Mm-hmm. And it hasn't happened yet, but it's going to happen. But okay, now that I'm old, I don't care anymore. When I was playing chess a lot, I was afraid I would get a theoretically drawn position that all the GMs know that I don't and I would lose it. And that has happened, but I didn't lose them. I just luckily would draw. Like I had rook against rook and bishop, and I'm like, I don't know, and then I drew. But I didn't know. And I've had rook and pawn endings that were drawn. I'm like, I don't know, and then I drew them. But, I mean, I could have easily lost them. Luckily, other GMs have saved me. Even Magnus and Anand have lost dead drawn rook and pawn endings. So, mm. so I don't feel, okay. It's, it's, it happens. All right, next end game. That was played in 1984. Now we're going to go to 1986, and we're going to confuse the audience because in this, I'm playing Robert J. Fisher. So it's more than one Robert yeah. J. Fisher. You've been dead for a long time, Pam? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, we'll start with this position. Okay, this game, I won the best endgame prize in a Midwest Masters in 86. Mm-hmm. Okay, so opposite bishops. Right? Mm-hmm. And even our rooks are opposite. His rook's on a dark square, mine's on a white square. What? Yeah. So if it's opposite bishops, I forgot. That tends in the end game to lead to more drawn more positions. Draws. Okay. Okay. Now, I have big advantage here in that his king is trapped forever. Yeah. His king is just, you know, he can't get out. Mm-hmm. Okay. My other advantage is my rook's on all of his stuff, and his rook is you know, shallow and pedantic. Okay, so because of those two advantages, I have the advantage. If, you know, his king was here and my rook was here and my bishop was here, just completely equal. But because his king is trapped and because my rook is great, this is better for me. Okay, so my opponent played h4, and which does nothing. That's not a good move. And now I made a move, which I'm not allowed to show you, so don't look. Okay. What was that? Um, F6. Right. Hey, it looks like I have no shirt on. You don't. Okay. <laughs> now, what most people don't know, and not only do they don't know it, they know the opposite, mm-hmm. which is like, you know, like that's bad. It's sort of like when you vote for Trump. It's not only do you know that you shouldn't vote for Trump, then you vote for him. That's like, okay. So... In, in end games with bishops, you generally want to do two things, which I've done both. You want to put pawns on the opposite color of your bishop, so I'm 5-0. Oh, mm-hmm. And you want to put pawns in the same color as your opponent's bishop, so I'm also 5-0. And, oh. and that way his bishop can't move anywhere, and my bishop isn't being stopped by anything, right? Okay. Now, uh, conversely, his just... pawns are on dark squares, which is the opposite of what I said. So now my bishop is great. That's why his bishop isn't great, because he can't move his bishop. So you want to put pawns in the same color as your opponent's bishop, so the bishop can't move. And the opposite color of your bishop, so your bishop can move. Now, the reason I played f6 is obviously I want to walk my king up, right? Now, even though I wasn't a grandmaster yet, they thought I would probably become a grandmaster, so I would be allowed to play king c4. Yeah, I can walk in to check once again, Grandmaster. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let me just tell you, and you probably already know, already know this, but the way the lower chess player brain works, um, I've heard this before actually, but I used to try and, and still do because I forget. I would try to put my pawns on the color that is the opposite of their bishop so they can't take my pawn. Right, and that's why I said people not only do the wrong thing, that's why I said the Trump thing. Yeah, yeah. They vote for Trump. Yeah. Right? That's like voting for Trump. But I used to do that right. a lot. Right, you don't do that. Okay, so now he played king g1. He wanted to make sure his king was as bad as possible. Mm-hmm. Okay, and obviously, and I went here. So I want to force his pawn to be on the color of his bishop. So why did he go over there? I don't know. He didn't know what to do. It's He doesn't really have any moves. 
He can't move his bishop because his pawn's hanging. He can't move his rook because it's mate. So he can't really move. Okay. He's not like, oh, why didn't he go here? He doesn't have a move. Okay. I, I, I got him strangled. Okay. So, you know, like date night. Okay, so he played here. Now, if you want to win an end game, mm -hmm. do you want to win an end game? Okay. Right, you do. What do you mean? So, yeah, the answer is yes. Okay. I was giving you an easy one. Oh. <laughs> then the ninety nine percent of the time, unless you're watching Inglorious Bastards, mm -hmm. then it's ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the time. You, you want to get a passed pawn and queen it. If you don't queen, you're not going to win. Okay, so I played the move a four. So that's the pawn that's likely to queen because that's the pawn closest to queening. I have to get rid of this pawn, which I'm, I almost got rid of it. Get in there. Okay, he played b5. I played h5, making sure his pawns can't move and his king can't get out. Not in a hurry. Moving my king up. I stopped his king from getting out. Bishop f3. See, his king can't get out again. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I walk my king up. Okay, so if he trades rooks, then that's, that's a good pawn, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So he played rook here. So he's going to play like rook here, rook here. He's going to play rook here and get counterplay. All right. I didn't want him to play rook here and get counterplay. So I played bishop e4. So now he can't play rook here. I'm always stopping his king and his rook from getting active. Then he played here. I checked him so he couldn't escape. He's going to play g4 and get his king out. No. Okay. And now I played the winning move. So this is like the key position. Usually I would start here, but I decided to start before to give you some you know, background. Mm -hmm. All right, so what's the winning move for black? The funny thing is, is this was before I streamed. Well, I had a good excuse, it was 1986. What happened in 1986? Other than this game. Um, is that when the Berlin Wall came down? No. It's close. <laughs> 1986. Uh, I don't know. I graduated high school. Oh. When did you graduate? 85, 84? 84. No. Okay. So what's the winning? You beat me. It has to be 89 because it came down in Germany. So it's 89. It, oh, it has to be. Kasparov, Karpov, second match? Also possible. Now, if Spencer was here, mm -hmm. which he's not, he would say, Karen forcing moves. And then yeah. they would say, is Spencer your son? And you would say, he's my stepson, and so forth. Um, let's see. 200 cents a deuce from Grunge Ward. Hey, Ben. Hey, Karen. Would you win against Deep Blue? Deep Blue does not exist. So, yes. I don't know, maybe, um, I'm not really sure, but maybe Rook takes the bishop. Right, and I already gave you a little hint, which you, know, you passed by because I, you know, I didn't really tell you. What? I said I, I didn't even stream yet. What? Oh, I didn't even hear you. What do I do on my stream? Oh, Always. exactly. Exchange. Right, so I want to exactly. queen this pawn, which I indicated earlier, right. and now this wins. And right, then king c4, I was and there's, at, there's, this king's over here. And you can block that rook off with... Even if I can't, king takes and... Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, Papa John's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now he's got nothing. Now, this is when it became clear I would be a GM. After rook e7, okay, the GM mindset, and this isn't even necessarily the best move, I'm just thinking like a GM even though I'm 16, is allow no counterplay. So I want a queen... He wants to win my pawn, right? Mm -hmm. And I i mean, a lot of people would just go here and win. That wins. But I'm like, you can't have my pawn. You know? Can't have it. 
because I'm going to queen. Why should I give him a pawn? Why should I take a pawn and then sack a, you know, why? Mm -hmm. Ridiculous. All right. And, you know, he tried and he failed miserably. The lesson is never try. And then he resigned because, you know. So I won best endgame for that, and the prize was $50. And then what city did I go to with my $50? Um, I don't know. Let's see if the chat knows. I'm guessing it's going to pop up a couple of times. There we go. Trying to learn, got it. Wow. And then he got it. Yeah, Philly. Oh, Philly? Yeah. In Philadelphia, that best game prize was worth fit de bucks. Yeah. <laughs> You know, from, I've said it many times, you know, from, uh, you know, the Eddie Murphy movie. Yeah. Trading Places. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Bo Diddley was the pawn shop worker. So I must have gone to the World Open with it, because that's, mm -hmm. I probably played in the World Open in 86. I don't know. <clears throat> it wasn't the Bobby Fisher. He was a Bobby Fisher. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah. Well, it's close enough. Yeah. Now, based on things that I say in the end game, which I barely said this ending, Barely a GM, mm -hmm. right? I said, you got to get past pawns. And I said, my rook was better than his. But what's the main outstanding theme in this position that I say every lesson? What do I have that he doesn't? 200 cent it is from Pam. Well, you, I mean, king got moved. Yeah, right? my king's all the way up the board. And he played king F1, king G1. You know, are you mm -hmm. kidding me? But that's because his king was trapped. Yeah. Yeah. He would have moved. He mm -hmm. would have tried. He tried, but he failed miserably. Okay, this is one of my favorites. This one, this is this has a special place. You know, this one. You're up a king. And the reason is, uh, I saw like 400 moves ahead, so I like to. Th then I'm the favorite. Now people have asked me this on the stream before, and this will confuse the audience and possibly even you. Okay. People say, "How far could you look ahead?" Like it, you know, like right. I've looked three moves ahead. And the answer is I could look infinitely ahead. That's the answer. Karen probably couldn't. You probably couldn't see like 80 moves ahead. Uh, no. Right. But I mean, I could. If some if if there was a position and and Carlson walked in and said, Ben, listen to this variation. You know, and he, and he told me an 80 move variation, I, I could repeat it back. Yeah. Yeah, and I would see the position. So I can look as far ahead as I have to. Now. Unlike Hikaru, I'm not flexing. Okay? Mm -hmm. I didn't say those moves were right. I just said I could do it. I didn't say they were good moves. But if they were good moves, because somebody, t the engine, t then I could do it. But if you said, Ben, look 70 moves ahead of the best moves, all right, then you got me. But if, if I was calculating and I thought those were the best moves, then I could do it. It's just not necessary. It's I'm sure I've looked 20, 25 moves ahead, but they probably weren't the best moves, and it's not going to happen, and why am I doing that? If I'm looking 10 moves ahead, and all of those moves are perfect, and you guys are impressed, is my 1,400-rated opponent going to play those moves? And if they don't, why did I use all that time? What am I doing? 9.99 from AAA. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay, now this game, I looked a million moves ahead, and it did happen. So that's, that's, you know, that, yeah. yeah. Okay. Hang on one second. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to um, ask to borrow your mouse so I could ban somebody. Okay. But they already did it. <laughs> All right, we'll start here. Got to start somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I could show you the game, but it's an end game lecture, so I can't. In this game, my opponent traded every move, okay? And it turned out, we don't know. Like, I, I don't know. Many people told me that this is Geary's actual father, that the person he thinks is his father isn't his father. That's this guy. Because this guy, he traded, 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 and was trying to draw. So it could, and he's Dutch. I mean, he's German, but shh. So I'm not, I'm not saying that it is Geary's father, but it could be. But that's, that's the rumor. You know, I don't know. I'm not, right. No elitism. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Okay. I will, I was just going to say, it's not really related to what you're saying, but I thought about, <laughs> well, today I was watching um, Hikara's stream and he was talking about Gary 
and he was saying that um, he described it the way Gary plays in a way that a different way than other people describe it, which was everybody always talks about he wants to make the safe move and he wants to draw, but he had it. I guess he said the same thing, but slightly different, which what I thought was interesting, that um, Gary wants to play the best move. He wants to play a perfect move and the best move. So a lot of times, if you if you're both playing really well, the best move is a drawing move, and Gary's unwilling to play the surprising move that maybe he knows isn't quite the best move to try to win. So I never really thought about it that way. I just thought it was interesting. that it, it, The way he sees it is that Gary actually wants to play the most perfect move every time, and that does unfortunately lead, lead to draws. So I don't know if you agree with that. You don't? I've, I've, no, Carl's never said anything I agreed with. So <laughs> Okay. Uh, Pot Sirius subscribed to Tier 1. Usually, you, you know, if, if a card is going to be right, it's going to be about chess. Mm -hmm. But not normally about chess people, just about, like, chess moves. Then he's right. But, like, when he says Magnus does this and Geary does that, then it's, oh, so you don't then it's like, that? you know, his stock oh. tips. You know, just you know, at your own peril. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, in this position, black is better because my king's on the fourth rank and his king's on the third rank. Yeah. Okay. Now... He has connect four, so he's got me that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I want to attack the pawn chain. Okay, Fleetwood Mac style, right? Okay, or possibly, uh, what's her name? She's dead. Fleetwood Mac style. Yeah. What? Yeah, the chain. Hmm. Oh. Who's okay. the chain chain? Who's that? Aretha Franklin. Whichever's funnier. Chain, chain, mm -hmm. chain. Okay, so I played the obvious move attacking the chain. See? Mm -hmm. So what did I do? You want to attack the chain. Yeah, I want to take all these pawns. Um, let's see. There's two moves that attack the chain, and one you're not allowed to make. Papa John's. Well, I mean, if you want to attack the chain, you have to move one of the pawns. So which one? Uh, the one I'm allowed to do? Wait, what I'm not allowed to do, what I'm allowed to do. Okay, I'm trying to figure it just a minute. I'm trying to figure out which one you're not allowed to do. Never play. Um, oh, F6. So what I play. <laughs> All right, uh, G5. Right. And the idea is if he takes on G5 and we trade rooks, let's say, and I yeah. take on E5, I have a passed E pawn, and okay. he has no passed pawns. Oh, yeah. because Okay. So even though Netflix wasn't invented at this point... He, he still Netflix and chill, and he played H3. And he's like, whatever. Okay, and I can chill. I played E6, and I'm like, your move, bud. Okay, and he's close to losing here, if not losing. He traded rooks. Okay, I took with the A pawn. And he can't really move anything. He can't move that, it's illegal. He can't move that, it's illegal. It should be illegal to go here, because I take his F pawn and his E pawn. And if he moves this, I take on Passant. Doesn't have a lot of moves. Okay, so he played king e3. Okay, and now I calculated forever. Like forever. Okay, and I'll tell you what I calculated, and then you'll show me, because you'll do it in your head too. Mm -hmm. Ready? All right. All right. I calculated c4 on black. I just second. Okay. Okay. And I want to play c3 with a passed pawn. Mm -hmm. So he would take on c4, would check. Okay. Well, then I would take with my king. Okay. Now I want to walk my king up and take his A pawn, mm -hmm. like king C3. So he has to play king to D2 to stop my king from walking up. Okay. Okay. Then I trade pawns on F4, so GF4, GF4. Mm -hmm. And now I go take his F pawn. So I play king D4, and I just go take his F pawn. His king's on D2, if you forgot. Mm -hmm. Okay. So well, if I take his F pawn, I win. He has to take my B pawn because I'm running away from it. Okay. So he plays king c2 here. Mm -hmm. I play king e4. He plays king b3. I take his f pawn. Takes my b pawn. I take his e pawn. And when I analyzed that, I saw what the key move for white was. And earlier in this lesson, we already talked about it. So we're going to get to that position because that's what happened. Okay, and this is what we just talked about. 
Okay. Now I have two connected past pawns. Mm -hmm. He can't take them. If he takes the back one, I queen this one. But he can't. So what I want to do is go here. And then his pawn's not dangerous. So I win. Now, if we both queen, I don't know who wins. But if I if he doesn't queen, then I win because I got two pass pawns. Mm -hmm. So what's the only move he can make so I can't come back here and stop his pawn? Um, King C5. Right. That's right. Now, I can't stop his pawn. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to the starting position. Okay. Now, when people analyze if you can call them people, it's very hard psychologically for you, you at home, to analyze the best move for your opponent because you don't want your opponents to play the best move. So here's the way weak players analyze. They make a really bad move. And I'm like, why'd you make that bad move? And they said, well, I made that move because then if he goes here, I win. If my opponent makes these terrible moves, then I win. I know if your opponent makes terrible moves, then you win. You should find the best moves for your opponent. Then you're analyzing like a grandmaster. Okay? So instead of like, I win because my opponent's terrible, find some good moves for them. Then you won't be surprised. Okay? So in my head, when I analyzed that, I realized you had to play king c5 because otherwise I run back. Okay. So now I get this position in my head. I can't stop him from queening, so I go first, so I queen first. I, I go first, mm -hmm. so I queen, and he queens. Now I'm a pawn up in the queen and pawn end game, because I have a pawn, and okay. If I trade queens, I said if, that's an easy, easy, easy win. If I don't trade queens, probably a draw, because he just checks me like a thousand times. Mm -hmm. But I saw I could trade queens. Okay, and I actually have more than one way to do it. So we got this, mm -hmm. and now I check. He can never go to this diagonal, and he can never go to this file, because I check and take his queen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's got, this is, this is what he can do. The problem is, if he's ever on a white square, queen d5 check trades queens, and then I win. So he can, he's got to watch it. But he can't, he can't avoid every square. What do you want him to do? Give him a break. He can't go here because it's illegal. He just can't avoid every square. So he played here, and I checked here. Remember how he can't go here mm -hmm. because he gets skewered? And he can't go here, here, and here because he gets skewered. And whether he goes here, here, or here, whether he goes here or here doesn't matter because I play queen here check and then queen here check. So, for example, check. The king has two legal moves, right? Mm -hmm. And then queen check trades queens. And then I have the extra pass pawn, so I win. And king c5 is the same. He can't go here because I win his queen. He has to go here, and then I win. Right. Okay. So I saw that in this position here, and then I played c4, and that all happened. Then he resigned. So you calculate along. And I might have, I might have seen it before. I don't know when I saw it. But I saw it here for sure. So that's why I played c4 because I saw this was all forced. And by the way, queen f2 is not the only move that wins, but that's – that's the line that I saw. Yeah. And then he resigned. Actually, he resigned here. Yeah, if I turn the engine on, it's going to say huge numbers confusing you. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to pull it up, but... It's an it, it's, it's Yeah, it, yeah, it announces made and says plus 70. Yeah. And then that's why it's good to have a better king. Okay. Well, so you see I played c4 in the starting position. The computer sees things very quickly also. So it, say, it sees that c4 is winning, right? Mm -hmm. And then it basically just gives all these moves. And it, it always says I'm winning because he, he has to do that. And then king c5 is the only move that makes any sense because if I come here, he, he can't, he doesn't have any counterplay. But the engine sees pretty quickly that it's winning. Yeah. And then what happened was, if I remember correctly, the guy's name was Geary, and he changed it because he didn't like the outcome of the game. <laughs> That's strange. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, how? What was your rating? Um. Before this is not really related to this, but when is this from here or from you? From me. Yeah. 
when were you able to visualize, because thinking about how well you can visualize all these moves, when were you able to visualize well enough to do a blind, you know, play blindfold? Like, what was your rating? Probably like 14, but maybe younger than that. That was a master at 14. So you were... You would say probably you, twelve. I can play a blindfold game, but I don't not, mean not your age. Ones. I mean oh. your, your rating, like your level. What level? Well, you mean like you? I could play a whole blindfold game and I'll play it okay? Yeah. Probably 2,000, 2,100. Okay. Yeah. I was just curious. And I could, if I played blindfold before, then I probably just played bad. You know, like I want to play like a good good move. Yeah, you know, that's what so, I meant. Yeah. Then. Uh, yeah. 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 I beat that guy. I showed him. Although actually, this is the final position. All right. Questions. Uh, let's see. That's why. I, why not Queen D five and trade? That's yeah. correct. Well, he resigned, so I could I, I couldn't trade. King hey, B five instead of King C five. Hey, little turd! I saw that you showed up and I didn't get to say hi. If you're still there. Oh, oh you mean King B five here? Yes, it's not completely stupid, but now my queen would check. So if we both queen, you, you don't queen, because I'm checking you. So, uh, yeah. Then you actually have to come back, and then I stop your pawn, and then it's an easy win. Mm -hmm. so, that's what you meant. Yeah, queening with check is annoying. All right. Next. Okay, now luckily there's some Germans in the chat, because there always are. And they can pronounce my opponent's name. If I pronounce my opponent's name, I'll get kicked off of Twitch. There's some centities. What? Where? Seven centities? I'm supposed to, you know, Xanth? Come on, Xanth. You usually give more than that. I mean, good job, Xanth. No, that's great. Thank Botez you. Botez needs to play topless. Gifted a sub. Should I ban them and their children's children? <laughs> I'm not going to ban them. You know why? Do you know why? <laughs> because he didn't say which Botez. <laughs> so if he meant like Papa Botez, that's, you know. Hey, I have a serious question. This isn't a joke. She would probably get more viewers. No, no, this isn't a joke. Thanks, Zan, for the serious donation. See, Amon Hamilton's special and approves of that. Name. No, no, now, now, my understanding of Twitch, this is serious. Yeah. If one of the Botez women was topless, that they wouldn't allow that. Twitch would ban them. That's not allowed. Of course not. Uh, well, you said of course not, but hold on. However... I was also under the impression if yeah. Papa Botez is topless, they do allow that. I'm not saying that that's true, but that's what I was told. I want to see what the chat that says about males that. males can be topless? That's what, that's what the chat told me, but let's see if that's true. Discrimination. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that the Papa Botez can be topless and that they, they won't ban him. Pretty sure. How good's Botez? The I good one is like 2100 and the bad one is about 2030. They're similar. When I say the bad one, she's just worse than her older sister. Yes, I mean, she's okay. not bad. They're both about similar strength. Sturge says you can't, men can't be topless. Men are no longer allowed to be topless. Right. They spell topless wrong, so I don't know. Well, he was talking but it is two words, so I don't know if I believe. Uh -huh. No, he can't. Damn. You don't know who Papa Botez is? What? Uh, orange juice? This guy's from East Germany. Yeah, this it's pronounced fucked. Amon Hamilton. Th th this guy. Fucked. Fucked? Fucked. Fucked? Hey, yeah, like meet the fuckers. I want you to find out. <laughs> yeah, meet the fuckers. Okay. Right. Yeah, the, from, from East Germany is a DDR. This was when the DDR wasn't dancing, when it was a country. Mm -hmm. You know, Dance Dance Revolution. Uh, and, yeah. I actually, that's a dumb game. But it's very funny on Family Guy when Bill Clinton's good at it. Yeah, my. Um, my I'll give you a trick question. My ex-husband used to play. Let me give you a trick question <laughs> on Family Guy. Who did Bill Clinton sleep with, Lois or Peter? I have fifty-fifty. No, I, you don't have fifty-fifty. Lois. It's a trick oh, question. Both of them. Right. <laughs> yeah, he slept with Lois first, so Peter went over to beat him up, but then he slept with him. Mm -hmm. so that didn't work out. Yeah, answer yes. No, Meg? I think he slept with Meg. Mm -hmm. All right. How much for a shirtless stream? You know. Well, if we get banned, it would it would be my last stream, so it'd have to be a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, level one. That's not too good. Okay. Bikini's okay. That is correct. 
Rocky Horror Picture Show plot. That is correct. Yeah. Terrible. Well, obviously. Hey, I, I have a serious question. This is a serious question. Yes. You're going to be like, you're going to like fall back in your chair when I ask you. Mm-hmm. Why do we have so many viewers? There's not that many people streaming. But what? I don't think we, did, we got a raid or anything. Right, what? Obviously, no, we had 400 viewers 20 minutes ago. Did we miss a raid? Yeah, did we miss a raid? Obviously. What's happening? Well, who was the one that said this? Go back up. Gus. Weird Gus. Well, I mean, obviously Alexandra Botez. Yeah, people are like, wait, what's going on? How do you have 1,100? Wait, right. It's very talented. Oh, Chess TV. That's oh, right. We're on that's Chess right. TV. We just got on Chess TV. Hi. <laughs> hey, Chess TV. Yeah, we're talking about very important stuff here. If Papa Botez was topless, if I was topless, <laughs> who would get banned first? All right. Oh, Chess TV, that's why. I okay. forgot about Chess TV. Go back up. What am I doing? No, I was just trying to answer weird Gus. Okay. I agree that she was um, talented, but, you know, she, like a lot but, of people, she has multiple interests, and she went to Stanford and, you know, did other things, with like streams. By the way, uh, today or yesterday, nobody knows on the stream, uh, Grishuk okay. said that Dubov said, so this is Dubov, Dubov said, Nepo's more talented than Carlson. Now, I supposedly, supposedly, I rag on Carlson a lot. They're like, why do you talk bad about Carlson? They're always doing that, right? Mm-hmm. Nepo ain't more talented than Carlson. Carlson wins every tournament he plays in. If Nepo wins the tournament, we're shocked. If Nepo loses all of his games, we are not shocked. If I told you Nepo lost to anybody, you wouldn't be like, oh my God. Nepo lost to Naka. Mm-hmm. Nepo lost to Dubov. Nepo lost to Grishchuk. You'd just be like, "What?" I mean, you wouldn't even. You'd forget. Yeah. But if Carlson lost to anybody, you'd you'd. You, what's happening? Right. Well, so what they mean yeah. is what Dubov means is is that Nepomniachtchi plays more interesting chess than Grish than, than Carlson, but he's not more talented. Okay, talented is you win every game and you win every tournament. That's talented. Okay, not you play really interesting. Darn, I lost again. That's. That's not talented. No, he's still talented. No, he is, but he's not he's not more talented than Carlson. I know. Oh. He's talented. Let's be clear yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to hear about his personal record. All I know is Nepo is not more talented than Carlson. Ridiculous. Okay. Uh, the Stanford of Michigan. That is correct. Um, that's right. We talked about shirtless, and then all the viewers showed up. 1,274 viewers. Okay, if you're just joining us from Chess TV, and I guess you are because... We have a lot of viewers. I'm, uh, my streams, other than Saturday and Sunday, which are sub-Saturday and sub-Sunday, where I play you guys, and then you know, usually you guys cheat or something, but uh, is I do teaching streams because whenever I play, I lose, and then I lose viewers. So now I teach, and I gain viewers. And usually Karen's hanging around, and she likes to be taught. So this is an endgame structured kind of lecture. Okay. I like to be taught, but I would like to do an occasional tournament. Very occasional. Okay. Don't, don't you guys agree? Just occasional. All I like right. to mix it up. You can't do, always do the same thing. Okay, so we'll start here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And I'll turn off the engine. Okay. So I just checked my opponent, and he blocked with the knight. Okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. And this pawn's defended. Mm-hmm. So I have an extra pawn, and he has two pieces for a rook. But he has three isolated pawns, and one of his pieces is pinned. So it's not even clear who's better here. Mm-hmm. Usually two pieces is better than a rook, but I mean, his knight's pinned, and it's three weak pawns, and I have an extra pawn, and it's an end game. And the engine says white's better. Okay. We were in time trouble here, and this is the Karen kind of time control. This game was played a long time ago. I think it was played in Dortmund 88. Okay. And... The time control was 40 moves in two hours. Then it moved 40, we get more time. And this mm-hmm. was move 37 I'm about to make. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I played the move king g1. So my pawn's not pinned. I wanted his rook to move off the f file, you know, horizontal. Mm-hmm. Then when I check him, he can't block with the knight because his knight's pinned. But his but he but I'm gonna take his knight. So if he plays like rook here or rook here, then I, I check and I win. Okay. Because it's check and he has to move away from the knight. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, he can't go here. He can't go here. He can't go here. He can't. So he has to play rook f5, I thought. Okay. 
then I could keep attacking his rook, like g4 and king g2. Okay. Anyway, terrible time trouble. Now, a bad habit that people have when they're in time trouble is they play tricky. And if you play tricky, then you might be wrong. The other thing is, it's an insult to me personally to think that you tricked me. So he played a move that's so tricky, you will be taken aback. Yeah. Are you ready to be taken aback? You ready? Sure. Okay. Is that what you would have played? Um, no. Right. And if I take, which I did, mm -hmm. then he plays a fork skewer pin extravaganza. Oh, I see. What's that? Um, bishop c6. That's right. Now that's, I don't know what that is, but it's good. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a fork, a skewer, or a pin, but it's all good, right? Yeah. Okay. It's it's all of those. Okay. White to play and win. White to play and win. Tricks are for kids. Okay. One to two hour chess video in one sitting. This is a three hour. This is a three hour stream. Yeah, we have 1,400 viewers confusing the audience. Mm -hmm. We're the audience. We're confused. Mm -hmm. All right. The more you donate, the more viewers there are. Wait, that's not right. The more you donate per person, the more hydroxychloroquine we can buy. No, that's not it. <laughs> the more per person, 1%. Wait, I have some papers here. Oh, man, that was good Trump jokes. Man, that was great. Look at Man Moth with a very accurate, uh, you know, variation there. Okay, one of the guys suggested okay. Rook F4, which is double check. <laughs> it's if, if, if the engine let me do it, I would do it. It does win, but it won't let me do it. 200 cents to do is take my money. Well, of course, Man Moth is right. Yeah. It seems like... Yeah. Maybe, well, I don't, I mean, I can't really calculate it out, but maybe if you took the... The knight. Okay, then he would take my rook. Okay, and then you could move your king up to protect. Right, that's correct. Your rook. Right. That is correct. Right. Oh, yeah. Now the variation that mm -hmm. matters, and it didn't happen. Because then you got your. Because king what he did was, is he took my rook and his flag fell, so I won. Mm -hmm. Now, this is actually more important for you at home, and even Karen, but Karen knows. Mm -hmm. It's more important for you at home. Now, you watching? Kind 40 of. moves in two hours. Yeah. And what move was his bishop takes rook check? It's hard to see that for me. Let's move 40. Oh, it is move 40. Yeah. And he took it, hit the clock, and I said, your time's down. What? You're talking about my game? No, this oh. is this game. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were making So he of, made... Because that happened to me. No, no. He made 40 moves. Yeah. And he hit the clock, and I said, your time's down. Okay. So you lose. You have to make 40 moves and you have to have time on your clock. Right. So his, so he lost. Okay. Uh, I, I also, I beat uh, Elvest the same way in the World Open before you guys were born. Oh, that happened to me. Thanks, Mepex. I had the biggest meltdown. I was so furious about it. 1,600 viewers. What's happening? <laughs> All right. Now, this is an easy win, but as Man Moth pointed out, mm -hmm. which is good for you, this is another puzzle for you. Okay. This is what I saw when I played King G1. If he plays... A more testing move, king f7. Mm -hmm. Wait, why is he taking my rook? It's pinned. Well, he had a second on his clock. But... All right. Now white only has one move that wins. Really? No, I wouldn't lie to you. Um, let's see. We well, can't let their king in. There you go. So you have to go h5. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, and then you win. Yeah. But I saw that I had h5 there. If I don't play h5, I could even lose. Could happen. Got to watch it. But okay, it's winning. So now if we go to the engine. Now, let me explain something to the audience, which I'm going to have to tell you like every stream for two years so you finally understand it. I've told Karen many times. There's different kinds of mistakes you can make in chess. You can make a positional error, tactical error, whatever. Okay, you guys have made them all. But... You can't make a calculation error and go, oh, darn. You can never, ever, ever do that. You can't calculate a line and go, I'm winning. I'm better. I'm equal. Play the line. 
your opponent makes a move you didn't see, and now you have to resign. Okay, this is something low-rated players do and high-rated players do not do. We don't calculate variations and then we're wrong. If we do, then we lose. So we don't do that. Now, obviously, in Bullet and Blitz and Rapid, we do that. But when it's 40 moves in two hours and so forth, this is why the World Championship matches are always 6-6. Six to six. 12 draws in Carlson Caruana. Karyak and Carlson, 6-6, six to six, mm -hmm. right? When Anand lost somewhat decisively to Carlson in two different matches, like all the games are draws. But still like nine draws out of 12. Because we don't miscalculate. When I say we, I mean the best players in the world. What we do when we lose... Is we don't we don't you know we don't agree, you know. Napomniachi says I'm better, and Carlson says I'm better. Okay, then somebody wins, but you know Napomniachi doesn't go. Oh, I missed Queen takes Rook check. So you can't do that. Now, obviously, since the world of chess is blitz bullet and rapid, you guys are having a hell of a time now because you get to see blunders galore. But when people have time on their clock, they don't do that. So that's why he made this terrible blunder. Because he's got no time on his clock. So, now I mean, he realizes now he's lost, but it's too late. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, if we go back, never going back. All right. So, the engine says, I'm better here. And the, it wants him to play bishop c6 now. Right. Or rook f5, as I indicated. And then it says, like, I'm, you know, better. Plus one, plus point nine. But after this move, which is all tactics... Now the engine says some crazy number. I'm not looking, but it does. Right? Plus three. Mm -hmm. Okay, although it's better than plus three because it's just a win. Yeah, and if I let it sit here for an hour, it's going to say, you know, plus, yeah, you can see it's it's just going to, it's going to announce mate or something. Right. But you see how the numbers are crazy now. Mm -hmm. Right. So you can't make a move after you've been playing chess for four hours and the game just ends. And when I say you can't, this is why you've never heard of this guy. I can't be showing you one Carlson game after another where the engine says it's equal, and then Carlson makes a tactical mistake and resigns. Now, in Blitz and Bullet, I can do that, but I can't do it in Slow Chess. I can't do it. <clears throat> I can't. Now, but look at the numbers. So those kind of tactical errors where you just lose right away, that's that's because that you never heard of the guy, although he is a GM, but, you know. East German GM. So if I play King F7, watch the engine. Because you, you were confused. You were like, that's the only move that wins? I'm mad. But you see, it's the only move that wins. There's only one move that has a plus score. Um, H5. I wasn't confused. You were, I said there's only one move that wins, and you were mildly surprised by that. Um, you thought every move would win. You were like, come on. Got to be winning. Not really. But then you correctly said, mm -hmm. got to stop that. That's right. I wasn't really surprised. Right. And then I got the outside passed pawn. Mm -hmm. I refer you to Andre Sokolov, Victor Korshnoi, 1987, for this at King and Pawn Endgame, right? Might not be 87, but it might be. It might be mm -hmm. 86. I think it's 87. Okay, my brother knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, Korshnoi was like making fun of his opponent after that game. Uh, keep Ben hydrated. That would be good. What move left the biggest impression on me? I mean, obviously, you know, Queen G3 and Lewis G. Marshall, 1923, mm -hmm. right? And then, obviously, uh, when Karpov played uh, Knight G2 against Kasparov in the, in the Bishop versus Knight endgame. I mean, that mm -hmm. was amazing, right? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, there's a lot of moves like that where I was like, wow. Yeah. I mean, Steinitz moving his rook down the seventh rank. And Uma Thurman was watching. She said, God damn. Can I get Perrier? I'm yeah. really high. Can you check? Yeah, I can check. And then see what it says. All What's, right. what it, now, now, let's say it says 70. What are you going to do? Nothing? <laughs> I wonder what you're going to do. Yeah, I can turn it down one degree. What if it says 71? You'll turn it down two degrees or still one? I don't know. Let me just see. What if it says 69? You're going to turn it up? No, <laughs> and then I'm going to die. Yeah. And then here, now you know which period to get, right? Uh, no. In the fridge, the higher up in the fridge, the colder it is. I didn't even know that. Yeah, you know, because it's near the freezer. I just never thought about it. I don't yeah. really get drinks from there. 
Very and also, you might have a yogurt in there from 1930. I threw it out already. Oh, but was it from 1930? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, let me... Um... I didn't know you threw it. You must have thrown it out really recently. Yeah. Yeah. 19 dickety. It's funny. We have a very small fridge, in my opinion. And my brother came here a couple of years ago. I don't know. And my brother works in a law office. And he's like, that's much bigger than our fridge at the law office. And I was like, wow, because the fridge isn't big. We can still get 20 Perrier in there, but that's because we try hard. All right, we have 1,700 viewers like we always do. I've shown, what's that? Where'd she go? All right. She left for an hour, but it wasn't to get me Perrier. It was to, you know, something. Okay, now, if you're Dutch, I'm sure you know the player Eric Knoppert. If, if you know, you were playing chess 30 years ago in the Netherlands. He's a he's a uh, he's an unusual guy. He's a fun guy to hang out with. Wouldn't be a fun guy that if he didn't like you, which in my case was about half the time. What to say? Oh, it was on seventy-two. I'm gonna check the roach. Seventy-two. What'd you do to it? Seventy-two. Oh my god. Now, for those of you who are confused, it's Celsius. Yes, that's really hot. Bishop takes h3 is a good move. Yeah. Oh, you have a new fridge, Mark? I think your fridge is bigger than ours now. I have a lot of viewers because I'm on Chess TV. Now, on Saturday, I'm normally on Chess TV for two hours. However, there's a conflict. So I'm going to be on Chess TV Thursday night for an hour and then Saturday for an hour instead of Saturday for two hours. Okay, this is my game with Knopper. I have a very funny story about this. You have to remind me at the end of this in the chat to say, tell the story. I don't want to tell the story at the beginning because it'll ruin it a little bit. <clears throat> also, my brother was at this game. This game was played at one of my better tournaments um, in Antwerp in 1989, which I tied for first. Had several GMs and IMs, and I was an IM. In fact, no, wait a minute. I was an FM. I was an FM because it was 89. Yeah. So I got seven and a half out of nine, six wins and three draws. I tied for first with somebody from maybe Yugoslavia, some Eastern European country. He was a lot higher rated than me. Okay. And I'm playing Eric Knoppert. If you play chess in the Netherlands... 25 to 35 years ago, you know who he is because he's an interesting character. Um, no, I didn't play Gelfand in this tournament. I, I beat Gelfand in Amsterdam. This this was in uh, in Antwerp. Although they both have a lot of diamonds. So, yeah. Better than Calvin is correct. You are the best streamer on Twitch. 100 cent to do's. Um, okay. 1,833 uh, viewers a Maybe you're right. I don't think I'm the best streamer on Twitch. David Pakman's pretty good. I like his stream. It's not chess, but I still like it. Okay. Uh, Queen G8 check is good, even though you wrote King G8. However, to refute your variation, I will now explain it is Black's move. So, Karen's not here yet, I guess... Making a cauldron here took hours. I assume she went to the bathroom. Okay. And 100, are you streaming from the club or from home? We always stream from the club for several reasons. Um, there's a lot of room here. There's no people or dogs here. The internet is 20 times better here than in our house. We have professional lights and cameras and all kinds of equipment here. We need the space. So streaming from home isn't really an option. We have to stream from here for many reasons. And our chess center is 3,200 square feet, which we usually use, but we've been closed for five months. And Karen streams in the bigger room, and she actually has a bigger setup than I do. She has more lights, and she has more um, monitors and more laptops. We have the same camera and microphone and laptop. She has another laptop and another monitor and another light. So she has twice the amount of equipment I have. Also, if I stream by myself, then she has twice the people I do because she streams with Spencer. 
Okay. I had to kill some time. Now in this position... Oh, by the way, we have 1,800 viewers. Yay. The chess center reopening soon? No. Okay. Uh, thanks, Tari, for the subscription. One day. Okay. Any idea when it's reopening? If I had to guess, I would say February, if I had to guess. But it's, we have no idea when it'll open. Okay. Now. Good question. I mean, though. probably Trump Our will shoes. lose. Biden will become president. You know, they'll get a real drug. People will act better. And, you know, whatever. And, when and then, we, then we'll reopen. When we yeah. reopen, Pam is going to come visit and C.L. Smith. And we'll have a party for you guys. It'll be great. Okay. Now, I, I set the position up, mm -hmm. and, the, and the guy in the chat said, why don't you go here? Although he did say King G8 check, but he's close. Okay? Mm -hmm. He meant queen. And I said, it's not White's turn. However, that was good that he said that, because that explains my opponent's next move. What move did my opponent play to stop Queen G8 check? Botez needs to play topless. Here's the problem with your handle. It's probably not a good idea to say your handle, but you keep giving me money and subs. So I have to keep saying your handle. So I don't even know what to do about this. <laughs> we'll have Karen do it. Five subs, thank you. Well, we can... We'll just call him Botez. Yeah. Or should we call him topless? I think that they, I think they would think it was amusing. Uh, well, I don't know. I Would you think, think it was amusing if it was Karen needs to play topless? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's there funny. You, there you go. All right. <laughs> All right. It's oh. pretty harmless. There you and go. Thank you, and thank you for those uh, subs. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, they would Two make, plus. you know, right. have triple, quadruple so their... So when he gives money on Botez, on, on, on mm -hmm. the chess bra stream, yeah. he says, Botez needs to play 2+. plus. That's what that's what Amon says, 2+. plus. <laughs> so that, that gets around. All yeah, right. Yeah. All right. I hope somebody's going to Botez's stream and their handle is Ben needs to... Okay. So what move can he play where I can't play Queen G8 check? It's probably more than one answer. There's a couple. Right. Well, name one of them. Okay. Well, one of them yeah. is um, Rook G7. That's one what he played. Them. Okay. That's what he played. Okay. And now I played Rook D8. Okay. 500 cent to do's. Ben should play 2 plus. That is correct. <laughs> okay. 1,885 viewers. What's going on? Okay, now here I have a big threat, and I, I told them to remind me to tell them the story after. Okay. Wait, hang on, sorry. As Daniel Naroditsky said, he should rot in his hellhole. What? Yeah, but who? <laughs> who, who, Amon? No, Amon, no, Amon has no enemies. Okay, go ahead. Okay, all right. Now my opponent checked me, okay. and I saw it, so mm -hmm. I played here. Now my opponent played a move so tricky, they wrote a song about it. Who wrote the song? If you don't know, we can look in the chat and they'll tell you. Is it a Run DMC? That's right. Yes. <laughs> For the first time in my life, I really love you now. Now. Yay. I finally got look, it. Look, Run DMC. Yeah. I love all you guys too. Okay. Now here's a move you would never play and you would never think of. Yeah. You ready? I don't think you're ready for this. Are you well, you're sitting would, down? I would never play Queen G1. Right. Very similar. You okay. watching? Okay. Knight takes B3. Um, Is that what you would play? No. Right. Now, that's a blunder, but not for the reasons you're thinking. Mm -hmm. If I take the knight, right, mm -hmm. now I can't play bishop f1, always play bishop f1, mm -hmm. and now I'm losing. Mm -hmm. Black to play and win. I didn't do that, but I'm explaining. You know. okay. Black wins. 1,900 viewers. Wow, that's more than 400. You guys who are viewing, you should follow and subscribe and never leave the channel. I what? see it. Yeah. H3. Put it in H. H. Only Queen legal move. Queen F1 check. Right, because the, right, only legal move. And then. Keep going. You I, can do it. I got to think about this one All for right. a second. Probably G5 mm -hmm. check. Only legal move. And then um, Queen H3. Mate. Mate, yeah. All right. So I didn't do that. <laughs> now. This game was played before Pulp Fiction came out, and yet, and yet, after this move, he knew my name was the Lord when I played the following move. What did I play? Um, all right, well, I got to look at it for a mm -hmm. second. Then you'll know what it's like when God has a gun. Okay, so 
I said black too. And you're saying, I said it's white smooth. And you're saying, what did you play? Yeah, this is like a mini Balashov game. Shh, it's a good hint. Let's see. Uh, what did you just say? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Wazilla subscribed. They subscribed for four months. Let's see. I, see. I don't even, I don't know what that says. Clipped by trying not to learn. Uh, let's see. You follow me. Yeah, somebody should, should give out a hundred subs to the new people who are here so they see what a great channel we have. A lot of people are here for the first time. You know, it's there, it's dark, they're scared. It's their first time. So if you give them some subs, then they'll come back. Oh, I think I know. You. Maybe you rook H8. That's correct. Check. Right, then he resigned. He's trying to get the key. Now, now let me, I have two stories about this. Yeah. So if he takes, if he mm -hmm. takes, because it's the only legal move. Yeah. Then what do I do? Uh, queen D8. Right. Now he has how many legal moves? Uh, let's see, two. Right. That move isn't good. Right. And this move is equally good. Right. Because of? Queen H8. When he takes I it. I mean, Queen H8. Oh. Oh, Queen H4. Mate. Sorry. Oh, I okay. Didn't know that was so funny. I played Rook H8 and he resigned. Okay, I have two funny stories about this. Mm -hmm. It was about this position and my brother was, I lived in Brussels. My brother was visiting. Thanks for the five subs, Output Coupler. Yay, thank you, Output. Thanks for the five subs, Botez Tuples. Thanks, Botez. <laughs> Thanks, Coupler. Thanks for 187 Beige Force. It's a beige alert. That's Yay, 167, beige sorry. Force. Okay, but anyway, my brother around here mm -hmm. said, you know, I was going to go to the zoo. You know, how long do you think your game is going to take? And I said, I don't know, an hour, I don't know. He said, okay. And then he left, and five minutes later, I played Rook H8, and he resigned. And there's no cell phones then. So I just sat there waiting for Mark to come back from the zoo, like, take me back <laughs> home to Brussels. Okay. That was the first story. That story's not funny. This is the funny story. That's kind of funny. This position, I was in a chess camp in Vegas Whoa. during the... What? Oh, Basic Prack gave 20 subs. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Basic Prack. 20 subs. People Although got... Rembrandt T. Q. Einstein, or Q. Einstein gave... Yay, subs. Gave, you know, subscribed himself. Thank you. Missed that. Go Basic People Prack. People have gone crazy today with... Their... What? Chicken Blender gifted with five subs. subs. You were getting a lot of subs, remember? I got remember? a bunch of subs. Yeah, you got a bunch of subs. Yeah. You get a sub. Yay. Okay. 2,000 viewers. Yay, Chicken that, Isn't Blender. that confusing? Um, what? I, well... 2,074 uh, viewers. Yeah. Yay, Chess TV. Yay, all new <laughs> like people sucker. need to make sure you're following, you know, subbing if you have the uh, money. Now, this Chestnut Bombs, who said I subscribe myself like a sucker, <laughs> I assume, I, I'm not sure, he'll, he'll tell us. He's making a reference to The Simpsons, which is really funny. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Homer, this is a very long story, but the end is great. The, 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 end, the end is great. The end is great. Apu's supposed to get married. It's t it's time to get married because it's the arranged marriage and the, the, the plant, whatever it is, comes. Yeah. His mom shows up and he's like, what do I do? And his mom falls down. He's like, yes, because yeah, he has extra time. <laughs> okay. okay. So Homer says, just tell you're already married. So he says, okay. So he's married to Marge. And so if he's married to Marge, then he can't get married. Then when she goes back to India, he'll, okay. Well, where's Homer going to stay? So Homer stays at the old folks' home with his dad, and he loves it because they're like he has a wheelchair and they're feeding him. So at one point, hey, he's more stuff going on. Right, so he's complaining to the nurse nonstop. He says, "How come that guy gets a breathing machine and I have to breathe on my own?" He says, "You mean the guy with the iron lung?" He's like, "Yeah." Then he says, "How come that guy gets a bedpan and I have to walk all the way over there to go to the bathroom?" And she says, "You mean over there?" And it's one foot away from his bed. And he goes, yeah. Okay. And, and then, okay, now it gets to the point. This is, is I have to sub like a sucker. Uh, he sees a guy in his wheelchair. And he says, what? That guy's using a wheelchair and I'm using my own legs like a sucker? <laughs> then he gets a wheelchair. Okay. I assume that's where he got that from. Okay. That's a great episode, by the way. All right. Yeah. Um, okay. So here's the story I didn't tell. Right. I gave this position at a chess camp. 
and I actually printed out diagrams. Thank you, Rich5610. Uh, uh, Boats has two plus, gave another sub. Rich5610 gave 500 centages because somebody gave you a sub, so you're paying it back. Yay, okay, thank good. you. And then there's a lot of noises. Okay, we're caught up. Okay. Man, everybody's been so great okay. today. So the chess camp had several teachers, and one of them was Dmitry Gurevich, mm -hmm. and he saw this paper laying around, and he saw this. Because it was the puzzle was on a piece of paper. Okay. So he's like, hmm. He looks forever. And he's like, what is this? And I said, it's white to play and win. And he looks forever. And he's like, I don't know. And I said, Rick A. Chick. He goes, oh my God, that's great. Can I keep this? And I was like, yeah. Like, let's throw it out. The camp was over. Let's throw it in the garbage. <laughs> like, he was, like, he couldn't find Rick H. Chait. Then when he, when I told him Rick H. Chait, he was like, he liked that. He liked the, the, the you know, the geometry. Yay, yeah. I found something, Dimitri. Yeah, Rivet and then Queen D8 check, and then, yeah. So I played this, and then he resigned. Mm -hmm. But this is funny because I mate you, you mate me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's a funny trick. Like, if I take it, he mates me with H3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so chess is hard except for one thing. All right, what's going on? Botez, I remember Dizdar. Yeah, that's right. It's not good chat culture. I agree, baby teeth, but Karen's like, this is great. What's I not, also, what's it's not, not good chat culture to keep saying his name. Yeah, I agree. That's well, we not, could just call him Botez. Right. Also, I like the number of viewers we have. Okay. Well, I mean, it, it's it's only bad chat culture if you, if you think the name's offensive. The reason it's offensive yes. is because of the word needs. He doesn't want to watch her play topless. She needs to play. That's, that's offensive. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that name. Well, it says Botez doesn't like oh, it. Oh, no, she doesn't like it. Who would like? Karen says she would like it. If, I don't I know. I think it would be funny. All right, so here's what you can do. The Amon Hamilton, who's had several names that are suspicious, <laughs> he, he could just change his name and change the Botez part to Karen. <laughs> and then you would be fine, and then she would be happy, right? <laughs> well, I mean, I can understand if why she might feel offended. But if he, if he changed it to Karen, that'll be okay? It would be funny. Okay, to me. so change your name. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I can certainly see how someone would be offended. I don't, I, don't, I don't like the word needs. I understand that you would approve of that, whoever you are. Well, but here's the key, needs. The key, point, the key point is that she doesn't like it. Yeah. And that does matter if somebody doesn't like. Like if you wrote Feingold needs to play <laughs> topless, I would find you. I would have you arrested. That's right. the key point. Yeah, change it to Karen. She doesn't mind. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I have nobody. I will. Me. I will change it for for <laughs> Karen. For Karen. But everybody knows you both. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, if she mm -hmm. doesn't like it, you know, you probably should change. He it. doesn't approve because he thinks it might be Papa Botez, and then he's offended. I agree. Yeah. I don't approve. Yeah, doesn't know what's oh. going on. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, if she doesn't like it, you should. Right. You know, Could somebody give Shalom one three five seven nine a sub? Thank you. Ben okay. should never play topless. I would be offended. Mm -hmm. Hey, look, twenty one hundred. Okay, so that was that was that was that. Yay! Now the thing to learn about this game is checkmate ends the game, and a lot of times when it's an end game, people don't think about checkmate anymore because it's rare. And if you're gonna forget something, checkmate's not a thing to forget. That's not good. And if your opponent can put you in check. You can't tell me you didn't see it. I mean, you didn't see it, but that's that's a weakness. Whenever anybody puts anybody in check, you're, you're supposed to see it. That's right. And in fact, Karpov was showing a variation today that Carlson, Epo, and Judah all missed. Okay? Mm -hmm. There was a... I'll tell you the key pieces. There was a rook here for black. There was a knight here, and there was a queen here. So the rook was pinning the knight. Because okay. if the... And, and and Carlson could have played queen takes c2 check defended by the knight. But if the knight takes the queen, then the rook takes the queen. So queen c2, the game's over. I can't picture anything. Anyway, queen c2, the game's okay. over. And Karpov's like queen c2 and nobody saw it but him. Instead, like the other moves were played. Yay. Which Carlson won anyway. But queen c2 was like, that, that, was the end of the, that was the end of the world. He still got it, yeah. Karpov. And then Karpov, mm -hmm. this is really strange. You can look at the video of the day. Karpov said, you will know my name. And they play Queen Steel. I was like, wow, Karpov, mm -hmm. god damn. All sorts of stuff's happening. Both, Karen needs to play topless, donated a sub. Thanks, Karen. Wait, where? Yeah. I just call him Karen now. Oh. I, I just call him Karen. That's, that's his name now. Okay. Karpov argued with Stockfish. 
I've already seen that when I worked with Yasser. Uh, Yasser argued with my engine every move. Okay, Yasser was sitting on the other side of the room smoking, and he had a chessboard, and I had my computer, and we were preparing for the game. Mm -hmm. And Yasser is like, I like white, and the engine's like, black's winning. And he goes like, oh, I don't agree. So I would play the engine move, and then I, okay. And then there was one position, and Yasser's like, I really like my position here. And I said, the engine says it's mate in seven for the other person. <laughs> and he's like, what? And after like three minutes, he's like, oh, okay. Like, well, you're getting mated by force. I don't know if we should like this Yeah, Sarah was always arguing with the engine. Yeah. Hey, Rich 5610 did stuff, and so did other people, too. What happened? Ah, there were all sorts of noises going on that got ignored. No, but that's because it was from it was from this. But I thought Rich did something. No, no, it was, it was from the chicken blender. No, that's and, real old. Right. Nothing happened. I thought, they made a noise. I saw something pop up. I said this. I know, Rich. Oh, that could have been a donation. Then it wouldn't be here. Rich fifty six. It could have been a donation. Did something. Uh, let me see. I'll look here. And then maybe somebody else. Uh, I'll put coupler gift to the sub. I missed that. Uh huh. No. Oh. It's both. It's it's you need to play topless, and it's you need to play topless basically everything. Oh, Rich gave five hundred centimeters, but I thought I said that. I did. You did say that. Yeah. So oh, okay. I, I only missed. I only all missed right. the year topless. That's all I missed. Yeah, mm -hmm. and let me tell you, I usually don't miss that. That's, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, 2,140 subs. I'm very confused. Okay. Um, Road to Chessmaster. 50 subs and none to me. Somebody give Road to Chessmaster a sub. Do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, next next game. I can do it. Nobody you're else so next. Oh, thank you, McDermott. All right. If you're German or Dutch, you're really going to appreciate the, the game and the story. I'm not even making any of this up. Okay. Now, you guys don't know what norms are. Okay. So I'm going to start here, then I'll... We're starting the lecture in this position, but we're going to skip to the end. This is round nine. nine. And my opponent needed a draw for I am norm. Okay. Possibly the title, I'm not sure. And I was playing for nothing because I lost all my games. This is in Groningen. Right, Groningen, your favorite city. Mm -hmm. Okay. And my opponent played A3 and offered me a draw. Okay? And it's really boring, etc. Okay. And what I didn't tell Karen was not only were we playing in the Netherlands, but my opponent was German. Okay. So I looked Fritz in the monocle, and I said, nine! Okay. So I now let me explain something to the chat. I never, ever, ever, ever give anybody a title or a, or a norm. Never. If you want to get a GM norm or an IM norm, you got to beat my ass. Okay? I'm not like, oh, draw. Here's your norm. I don't do that. I don't care who you are. I don't do it. Nobody's ever gotten a norm against me unless they got the norm against me. Not because I offered them a draw or we played a 10-move draw. I don't do any of that. Okay? You, you want a norm, you ain't getting it. And I could give you a list of people who needed to draw or win against me in the last round, and I took him out back, mm -hmm. right? One was particularly funny, but I don't want to make fun of the guy. Yay. But, I mean, I, I beat a guy so bad, he, like, cried at the end. Yay, creeping dead. Okay. 95 Yay. Montez. Can I play you? No, you can't, but thanks, thanks, Karen. Okay. <laughs> 250. Yeah, keep keep doing it, Karen. Okay, cre creeping, creeping death 95. I like that. Maybe... Maybe the name is offense. <laughs> uh, yes. he, he, he's giving me money now. Now that so it's Karen. Yeah. Okay. I so I said no. Let me flip the board. All right. So we traded, 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 and we got to this position. Okay. Okay. Now, explain strategically to the people what what a clear advantage Black has here. What's good about black's position that you can't say the same for white? You're like, yeah, white can't do that. And the position looks pretty symmetrical, right? Mm -hmm. So but there's something that's much better for black than for white. P please explain. And I'll read the chat. Um, better for black. Okay. Now, you all know there might be giants. You all know. Okay. And... There might be giants said, you have to do what you're good at. So Karen needs to play topless. You're good at giving money and subs. That's what you do. Playing chess, that, no. I, I, 
we, I'm not good at playing chess. So I don't play chess. You're probably not. So do what you're good at. And I'm going to go whistle in the dark. Right? Um, yeah. Maybe. Got to do what you're good at. Right. Okay. So you guys are good at donating. You guys are, you guys are good at being viewers too. 2,100 viewers. Pretty good. I'm going to go chain smoke. You got to do what you're good at. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, it looks pretty... Um... Right. There's one big difference, and that's why black is better here. There's well, a big there's a big the, thing going on. The F-pawns... I don't know if that matters. No, the F-pawns are about the uh, same. There's one square away. One big difference. Yeah. There's a big difference. Darn. Mm-hmm. And, and this is a very important for you to understand pawn structure. It's yeah. very important. Um... Okay, there's four center squares. Mm-hmm. Okay, the pawns are in the same square, so that's nobody's better. Okay, these squares are not occupied. Right. What piece would you like to put on those squares? The king, the queen, or the knight? I'd love to put the knight on. Correct. The door. I can okay. legally put my knight here. It'll take me a while, yeah. like two moves. He can't put his knight. Oh, okay. I the pawn on that. c4 mm-hmm. is positionally incorrect. Yeah. He would prefer to have it here. Then I can never play knight d4. Once he plays e4 and c4, he's weakening d4. Mm-hmm. This is why in the Sicilian, you don't play e5. It's the exact same thing. The Sicilian, you play e c5 on move one, right? Mm-hmm. So if you play e5 ever, you're giving away d5. Okay. Well, that's playing c5 and, D5 and e5. So he's giving away d4. Okay. Now, also, the other advantage is it's my move. So I can take the d file. Another advantage which is more, doesn't really require chess understanding, it's just, it's right there, mm-hmm. is I am attacking your A-pawn and you're defending your A-pawn. That, that's no good. You, you, I'm going to be attacking your A-pawn the whole game and your queen's going to sit there defending it? Horrible. If you play A4, you're giving more squares away. My knight can go here, here my queen. You don't want to do that. All your pawn, so, he's, so he's much worse here, mm-hmm. much worse. Okay, and you know me, I like to, you know, I play and I play and I play. You know, I don't, you know, I'm not in a hurry. Okay, so I played knight e6 because I want to play knight d4. Okay, and then I didn't play knight d4. I showed him. I played here because I'm attacking his pawn. Mm-hmm. And his queen can't defend his pawn because his queen's defending that. So he has to never play. Um, never play. Oh, f3. There's no other way to defend your pawn. Yeah. Okay. And good. Now he's more weakening his king. All the dark squares are weak. Papa John's and Karpov. Mm-hmm. Queen check. If he blocks with his queen, what smelly move should I play? <laughs> knight, eight, knight h3. Right. So he played here. Queen e3. I mean, Karen hasn't seen penetration like that since Thursday night. What's Thursday night? Date night. Correct. That's <laughs> correct. Now, so I saw this penetration a while ago. I think it was when you first came to... Oh, so I play here. He has to play F3. Then I check. He has to move his king, and then I come in here. Mm-hmm. Now I'm threatening his knight. Can't move your knight because your knight's defending your F pawn. Right? Yeah. Okay. 2,200 viewers because of those jokes. Damn. Okay. <laughs> He played queen f2, and I win a pawn. Now, you're going to lose a pawn here. I, I, I'm threatening your knight. Your knight can't move. Mm-hmm. If you protect, you, nothing you can do. So he played here. I took a pawn. Okay. Now I played h6, so my king is super safe. You can't perpetual check me ever. Okay. He tried to trade queens. Now, every end game lesson, every middle game lesson, I say the same thing. Everyone, I go into a spiel about how everything you know about chess is wrong because of your coach and because of the book you read. Now, instead of throwing the book out and firing your coach, which is two things, just take the book and throw it at your coach. Then you get, then you get it done in one swoop. Every chess coach in every book says the same wrong thing here. Mm-hmm. They say trade when you're ahead, which is wrong. Okay, don't do that. Here, I'm ahead. Mm-hmm. Black's ahead. I'm ahead of pawn. Whose king is safer? Um, 
them black? Black. So I'm not going to trade queens. Ridiculous. I checked. Okay. And then I took another pawn. I'm up two pawns. I mean, what do you want the guy to do? He's Samoan. Okay. He checked me. I saw it. He took a pawn. I'm only up one pawn. Now I play knight h3. Man, how's this king doing now? Not good, right? Okay. Now he's stopping all the threats, but still... Okay, now I'm threatening. Checkmate. And queen here's pretty good too. So he played queen f2. He played king g1. Put it in h. Mess his pawns up. And then I just played queen e6. Because I didn't know which pawn I wanted to take. That pawn's a goner. So I might as well threaten this pawn. That pawn's easy to defend except for one thing. It's not easy to defend. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he defended it. And then I went here because I want to infiltrate again. Check. And king f one's a blunder, by the way. I should have asked you for the forced win here, but I'll give you a break because I already, I messed up. Now, king f one's a blunder. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, black to play and win. Um, let's see. I can go knight e2. Um. There's an end of this story, too. 2,224 viewers. Mm, I see, 92. Even even more than people who aren't streaming. So, but then they go king f2. Um, Look at the big brain on... I can't even say your name because I'll get banned from Twitch. Man, you guys got some names that, you know, that I can't believe Twitch lets you have these names. Let's see, God queen, damn. We just got a lot of viewers, like a lot. Now we have 2340. Yeah. Like it, 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 like the thing was moving. I think I'm getting like, I'm getting a uh, trick by Twitch here. I think we have 300 viewers and it's just like, you know, uh, are you kidding me? Wait, maybe queen g3 check? Maybe. That's the answer that I wanted to hear, maybe. 999 from Ben Village. It takes a village. Now what does he do? Mm. Um. Probably, I guess, king f1. And then... Go Karen. Let's stay there. <laughs> is that knight? Queen? No, no, because the knight's there. <laughs> Whose knight do you like better? Oh. Yeah, exactly. Let's never play f3. See. If you should never play f3, it would follow. You should force your opponent to play f3. Then they played f3, so you win. QED. Okay. Um... Let's see. Probably. This is definitely a puzzle rush. You get this in puzzle rush. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Let's see. Oh no, I almost I almost put the knight on the square that was bad. Maybe knight h three. Mm -hmm. Oh. It's um, puzzle rush. Puzzle rush. Do what Spencer says. What's the forcing move? Knight h three is not a forcing move. Uh, forcing moves first. Checks and captures. Okay, well, forcing move. Karen needs to play topless gave us 50 cents in a row uh, several times. Maybe queen h3. Although formerly 5IT gave 51 cents, so I don't know. Queen h3 check then? More forcing. Well, what's more forcing? If checks are forcing and captures are forcing, uh -huh. then shoot them. Shoot them both. Um, what movie? Let's see who gets it first. Come on, who types the fastest? And was the answer. 2,300 viewers. Shoot them, shoot them both. Very good, violin and viola. All right, violin and viola. Who's the only person who's world famous for playing violin and viola? I mean, maybe it's you. Maybe you're the one, maybe you're the one. I don't know. Man, Yo Yo Ma is the worst answer ever. Damn. Well, at Pat Buchanan might be there. Yeah, I don't know. Well, make a move that's a check and a capture. Um. That shoots them both from Indiana Jones. I mean, it's Raiders of the Lost Ark is the name of the movie. Check and capture. Um. 
See, the music is written differently for the violin and viola, so playing both is difficult. You know, they got the backwards G clef or something. I don't know. Nobody understands it, except Karen. Oh, I see. It is a puzzle rush. Duh. I said queen takes E1. Yeah, then he realized he wasn't getting his <laughs> IM norm. I think he already realized yeah. it. Yeah, and then he resigned. I don't know why I couldn't see yeah, that. And then check. I would get yeah. that in a puzzle rush. Yeah. So now let me tell you the end of the story, and this is not a joke. This is not a joke. It really sounds like a joke. Yeah. It's not. The people who are from the Netherlands will, will agree this is not a joke. So I went to my Dutch friends, you know, Ik Ben Ben, and I said, I beat a guy in the last round, and he needed a draw to get the IM norm. And they were like, you know, so? I didn't care. And then I said, and he was German. Then they were doing cartwheels, and they, and they bought me out drinks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they said, oh. Then they said, let's go get drinks. We're buying. Yeah. The Dutch don't like the Germans. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Botez yeah. and Tommy. Well, that's you, not Botez. Botez gave 50. Look at this. Look at what Botez did here. Watch this. Look at that. That's all Botez. Oh, all, wow. All those. Wow, Botez is going crazy. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. That's Thank actually a video you can buy at late night television. Botez gone crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Gone wild. Tommy Fook and Shelby subscribe. God damn. Tommy Fook and Shelby knows a lot about Michigan. And when I say knows a lot about Michigan, he knows a lot about Michigan. Like he's from Michigan. Oh. If he's not from Michigan, there's something weird going on. Is it personal? Because he knows a lot about Michigan. <laughs> I'm not saying he's from Michigan. I'm saying he knows a lot about Michigan. He's probably from Michigan. Well, I, I told this story. The, 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 the Dutch guys were like, he's German. That's great you didn't take the draw. By the way, I, the, I looked up the guy later. He became an IM later. Mm. I got nothing against, I, you know, I'm like kidding. But, man, the Dutch guys weren't kidding. Mm. They don't like the German. God damn. Okay. Everybody so, be sure to follow if you didn't already click the follow button. It calmed down like in 1980. God damn. For all yeah. you new people. So here's what happened. This, I read about this on the internet about five days ago. Uh -huh. There's a very elderly guy. And he is, he's Dutch. I don't even know where he lives now. He might still live in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. And supposedly, you know, when it was Nazi good time in the 40s, the Nazis took people from the Netherlands and into Germany and then Auschwitz and stuff, you know, later. Yeah. Right? And, and, and so, so he, so this, is, this is a true story. Okay. Is, so okay. then, many years ago, the Dutch, one of the Dutch guys who was, you know, he, he sued the Dutch government for not, like, doing more, and he won. Mm -hmm. Now he's suing Germany. He says, you got to give us money for these people, and, you know, and then and the Germans are like, sorry, you know. Like, they might actually do it without going to court. Mm -hmm. there, there's a court case. Huh. He's like, you got to give us money because you came in in the Netherlands, and you're taking, you know. This, that shit's still going on. Also, one of the Nazi guys was just on trial this happens like every year. There's they find some ninety five year old guy, yeah, and they're that. like, you know, you better watch it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, Germany would say sorry. The Angela Merkel's like sorry, but it wasn't me. You know, basically. Yeah. But I didn't know about the Germans had trains in Netherlands taking people to go kill them. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Damn. Yeah. The yeah. truth hurts. Germans would say sorry. Yeah, the truth hurts. Definitely, they would. Yeah, man, this shit's still going on though, man. What's so, yeah. 2,345 viewers a day. The U.S. would never say sorry. Is, that's correct. I mean, how do you make up for the past? Yeah. Papa John's. That makes up for it. They make us eat Papa John's. Papa John's. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. All right. Next. You're so next. We have, you know. Have okay. Now, this is a game that I remember fondly. It was in uh, Cap -la Grand. Right? Your favorite town. Right, Karen? Mm -hmm. And that's the suburb of... I need a Twix. Yeah, I'm getting confused here. All right, I fixed it. It's the suburb of Dunkirk. Okay. Okay. So we have the most drawn position. I don't even know where to start. We'll start here. Okay. Now that's drawn. Okay, nobody can do Vishwa nothing. It's just nothing, nothing's happening, right? It's like the Blair Witch Project, but it's before the Blair Witch Project. The Blair Witch Project was based on this game. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when it's really drawn, your opponent falls asleep 
you know, metaphorically, and then you win, like I did this game. And this guy was like 2350 feet A, right? It's hard to lose this position. Just move your queen around a lot, and that's a draw. Okay, so, so don't fall asleep. Nothing's happening. Okay, and now he blundered. Okay. So nothing happened. It's been all zeros the whole game. This is all zeros. But he blundered. Mm -hmm. Okay, what should he play? Um, but it's... But there's still no winning chances for whites. So you're just saying a drop. Just another well, I'm black and I'm the one trying to win. I know. All right. So, so this this is question. attacked. Right. So we, what do you do? You're white. Um, Don't make the move he made. That's <laughs> that's the only. Now there's other moves that also are bad, but there's silly moves that are bad, like giving your queen away is bad. You know, there's a lot of moves that lose. Mm -hmm. Okay, but like you know, as Rick's attacked. And he found one of the few squares that loses. Now, there's a silly move that loses, rookie two, because then this is mate. Right. But he didn't do that. He's not He's not doing that. First of all, what's the safest move? What move you play and you're like, I'm safe. I'll never, nothing will ever happen. That's what you have to do. Play the safest move. Oh, rook G1. That's what he played. That's oh, not the safest because it tra it traps your king. Oh. The safest move, the only legal move I can play that's a capture, mm -hmm. this hangs my queen, this hangs my queen, this hangs my queen, is rook takes pawn. Because then I'll be checking him and taking things and maybe winning his rook. So rook f one's the safe move. Then if I, I can't take his f pawn anymore, he just takes back. Do you know what I mean But rook? I he played rook g1. I know. I'm saying it just seems safe because the king's protected. That's, it, it is, but the king's trapped. I know. Right. So I'm now black to play and win. I'm just explaining to you why it felt Well, safe. that's why he played rook g1. Right. Right. Now I'm going to ask you two questions. Mm -hmm. The first one is black to play and win. Okay. Then if you solve it, I have a funnier question okay. next. All right. 2,400 viewers. If we stay here forever, we'll have every viewer in the world. Uh -huh. So black to play and win. Can somebody tell me since... I haven't been paying attention for several hours because we're streaming what the death toll is in Beirut now. It was like 25, then it was 30, then it was 50, then it was 100. It might go down. Sometimes they estimate the wrong way. But I saw what happened. It's got to be more than 100. It's got to be nuts. I, I, I saw it. I was like, what the hell? Mm -hmm. It's negative 75? Damn, that's three. That's a three. 78 is what they're saying now. Okay, so it got better. 4,000 wounded. Damn, harsh. It went from 100 to 70. That's good. 6,000 injured, 4,000 injured. I mean, I saw that and I couldn't even believe it. What's the winning move? Spencer. Maybe, what? Spencer, forcing move. Oh. Well, my move wasn't at forcing. I was going to say rook d2. So the rook d2, rook. there's no threat. I know. Well, so you got to do forcing. Yeah, okay. I need to look at it for another minute. How? <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, Man Moth answered my second question. Thanks, Man Moth. That's good. Oh, wait, I think I see. Rook takes F3. Correct. Okay, now the obvious variation is yeah. he takes and I made him. Right. Okay. Now, he made random legal move here. Mm -hmm. He played here, and I won in a thousand moves. What move did I have to calculate accurately? <laughs> Forcing move. What, what? I don't understand. I played rook takes f3. Yeah. I calculated the one move checkmate. Yeah. I had to calculate other forcing moves he could make. As a grandmaster, I got to analyze everything. Um, I can't be like messing up. Man Moth gave the variation. He said you had to analyze this. Oh, I can't. There's only that. one move White can make that I was afraid of here. That's what I analyzed before I played Rook takes F3. It's a move you would never play, and if I show it to you, you'll start crying. That's the move. Forcing move. Well, I mean. Forcing move. Okay. That makes so much no. noise. Oh. <laughs> um, so you're saying prior to moving that 
Why? No, right here. Okay, sorry, I what? played rook f3, okay. and I, if he plays the next move, I analyzed it. You have to analyze forcing moves. Right. But it doesn't work, because I'll show you why. Okay. What's the most forcing move ever, confusing you? Um, I mean, I guess queen, queen takes... Um, Maybe E5. Not E5. Close. Or F7. Close. One more. Um, I don't know. There's one more capture. One more. The G pawn? Right. Oh, okay. These, these just give the queen away. This one does not give the queen away. So I have to take it. And he takes my rook, and my, I'm pinned. Now, if this is a draw, mm -hmm. I can't play rook takes f3 because we draw. I don't want to draw. Black's winning. How does black win? Um, wait, what about f3? I'm sorry. You said. When I played the move rook takes f3. Okay. Rook takes f3. Yeah. I have to analyze queen takes g5 accurately because mm -hmm. he could have done that. And I have to make sure this is winning. Okay. And it's possible more than one move wins. Possible. I mean, I didn't see all that that was going to happen. Right. You have to see all that's going to happen. You can't play rook takes f3. You'll be surprised. <laughs> yeah. When your opponent can do stuff that's tricky, you have to see it. Otherwise, you don't win. All right. Okay. I'm telling you that's what I saw. And then okay. I, I knew that I was winning because I play what move here? What's the best move for black? Um... Let me see. A couple of choices. Well, she's thinking, uh, what country is my opponent from based on his name? Um, what's the best move for black? Gab 12 is the first one who got it right. Bulgaria. It, Mark had the funniest answer, Botswana. Yeah, Bulgaria is correct. Oh, uh, probably. Um, I think you can just take the rook, can't you? You can, but you you don't do that. You move your king up in the end game. Oh, okay, that's better. Well, yeah, your new king moves up. Okay. So you're gonna lose your queen for the rook. So you want your king to be moving up while that's happening. So their king doesn't move over, I guess. Well, you I want your king to move up. That's what you want. Right, okay. So if I take take, then my king didn't move up. Well, if you if you didn't move your king up, then that means you're not going to win? Right. Oh. That's the, I mean, we have the same pawns. If my king gets in here, I might win. If my king's here, it's a draw. We have the same position. I couldn't see that because I was counting up. Mm -hmm. um, the squares and it looked like the king could still get up there and, t and take but you the you wouldn't pawn. you wouldn't hope the king can get up there you would do it now um, you just no, move I'm your king saying up there. I counted it and I thought that it could I okay so yeah. well let's we, we could do that but it obviously loses a lot of time to do that because you can move your king up yeah so you would not move your king up and then move it up later you'd move it up now this loses a lot of time right because you're not moving your king up okay and then but it's not that yeah, obvious now your king well if you move your king up to, e to either h6 I know, or f6. Right, I'm just right. saying it's not obvious. Right. If you do this, you don't get your king to f4. I see that now, king, this but you king act like here. it's obvious. For right. my level, it's not that obvious. No, it's not obvious that the king gets to f4 or doesn't. It's just obvious that if I move my king up, that's better than not moving my king up. Mm -hmm. you, you would never do that. You would always move your king up. And you, you wouldn't take the rook. I'm you telling you, it wasn't obvious to me. If it was obvious mm -hmm. to me, I would have said the right answer. So obviously it wasn't obvious to me. Right. Okay. So you move your king up. Where do you move your king? Um. Well. Let's see. It's hard for me to see that matters a whole lot, but I wouldn't want to block the f pawn. So. But at the same time, you want to. Um. I don't know, I guess um, H6 
good. It, it shouldn't matter where you go. G6 is silly because you're not unpinning yourself. Right. So then he could just go here or something or here or here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it doesn't matter where you go. He's going to take your queen. It, do, it doesn't matter. Here he doesn't have to take your queen because your queen's pinned. Right. If you go here or here, he's going to take your queen. Otherwise, your queen up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so h6 is fine. Okay. Now my king can't move in. So then right. I play f6, and now it's his move. Mm -hmm. And now my king moves in because he has to move. He has to take And then my king moves in. And then the engine says mate or something. I don't know. Uh, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and I win. Okay. So I saw that when I played rook f3, that if he plays queen g5, I take, I move my king up, and I win with f6. Mm -hmm. uh, Dog Sanders subscribed, 2,400 viewers, Papa John's. Yay, viewers. Okay, mainly Papa John's. Okay, so he played random legal move, and then I now I'm winning because his e-pawn's weak and off a pawn. So I won in 1,000 moves. All right, then he resigned because I'm winning his queen. That got tricky at the end, but didn't And matter. I forgot where this game was played. Capelle la Grande, which is a suburb of um, Dunkirk. Mm. Your favorite movie. Mm -hmm. So right. here, if I turn the engine on, right? Zero, 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 right? Mm -hmm. Then he he's like, every move draws. He goes there. Now the engine says, ha-ha, right? Rick takes F3 winning. Papa John's. It doesn't play queen g5 because it realizes that king and pawn inning is winning, so it plays random moves like he did. Now it gets even better for me. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, now I win. Yeah. So even the most boring position you can win, and the reason is the opponent loses their sense of danger because he's like, this is obviously a draw, and he played the quote-unquote safest move, and that trapped king on h1 reminds you of my game yesterday with Seawald where I played rook a3, and the king's on h1, so he gets back rank mated. Remember the rook a3 move, that great move with the queen here? My queen's attacked. Seawald. Yeah, yeah Dennis Seawald. Remember my queen was here and his rooks were here attacking my queen? Oh, and then yeah. it was rook here. That's because his king was on h1, trapped. And he trapped his king again, and it was a different guy. And this was earlier. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that was a nice... Yeah, 2,400 viewer. Trying to learn likes that Rook A3. He texted me about it today. Yeah, yeah that was it. I like that yeah. a lot. Show that position. Well, I showed it yesterday. Mm -hmm. they, can go, they can go to the internet and look it up. Now, I was in Capel or Dunkirk. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. True story. I'm on the bus. And then now in a lot of places in Europe, but not in the U.S., not in the U.S., you get on transportation and it's assumed that you paid. You just get on. Mm -hmm. You paid. Then occasionally the, you know, the, the 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 gawking rabble gets on and says, like, where's how did you pay? Like the, the police come on and say, okay, let's see how you paid. And then like the people take out their tickets or whatever, right? But occasionally there's a guy who didn't pay. I was on a bus and the and the guy came on at the stop, the police guy, you know, the guy who's in charge. Mm -hmm. And he's like, let's see the tickets. I showed him my ticket. And there was a guy who obviously didn't have a ticket. This guy was a genius. He had on really tight jeans and he was doing this, like to get his ticket for like five minutes. He's like, eh. and then they're like, hey, get off the bus. He's like, eh. and it's very similar to the scene in Blazing Saddles where Harvey Corman says, take this down. And Slim Pickens is looking for pen and paper for five minutes. It's very similar. The guy's like, this and I'm like, all right, that guy's got no ticket. He's not. He's just pretending he can't get in his pocket. It was funny. Yeah, that guy was a genius of the highest caliber. Yay, yeah, I nice think guy good. I think that guy became president of France. All right, nice guy, good. Now for a trillion dollars, if he was in the movie Reservoir Dogs, I've never seen. If he was, what would his name be? I haven't seen the movie. Well, then that's why it's a trillion dollars. I just give him a trillion dollars away. <laughs> Let's see if they get it here. So far, they didn't get it. Pink? They're saying Mr. Pink. Mr. Pink is wrong. That's a character in the movie, but they're just naming a random character. Yeah, well, they're trying. Yeah, they're not trying very good. Mr. Black. Terrible answers. Nice guy, good. Boy, you guys are really giving bad answers here. I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm not impressed at all. I'm not flexing either. 2,350 viewers to do. You guys really don't know? Wow, I can't believe you don't know. 
I'm, I'm shocked and appalled. I like Mad Moss answer. Wow. They don't know. The Wolf, that's the wrong movie. <laughs> what? The Wolf is Pulp Fiction. Wow. It's Nice Guy Eddie. Nice Guy Eddie is played by Chris Penn. Nice Guy Eddie. <laughs> Yeah. How do they not know Nice Guy Eddie? I was laughing at Fraudwood. You forgot to... Well, that's true. What? Fraudwood said something? <laughs> exactly. How do you guys not know... How do you not know Reservoir Dogs? Your homework is to watch Reservoir Dogs if you're over 35 years old. Then you can watch it. That was Harvey Keitel in Pulp Fiction. Right. The Wolf was. Winston Wolf. R.I.P. Chris Penn is correct. And... Sean Penn, who you've heard of, I've heard of both of them. Got married today. Oh, he did? So you didn't know that. Did. Gotcha. Did. Yeah, Chris Penn died a while ago. Who did uh, you're 29. Say? If you watch Reservoir Dogs when you're 29, you may have... I, I'd wait till you're 30. Who did he marry? A random woman I never heard of. She's probably super famous. I just never heard of her. She Maybe she's the most famous actress of all time. I don't know who she is. Mm -hmm. All right, next. You're so next. Ah, oh, that game's too boring to show you. This I show this game too much. All right, we'll do. We'll skip to Jen Shahadi. Okay, this game also has a story. And the story ends with Jen Shahadi's tongue, as most stories do. Mm. Several years later. What? Okay. What does that mean? So, well, I get to hear the story. Okay, so in this game, this was in the U.S. Championship. And what they did was this, for confusion. They took the best women and the best men, and they played in a tournament, the same tournament. So you could play a man or a woman every round. Then when the tournament was over, the highest placed woman was the U.S. Women's Champion. Now, this was very unfair to Jen this particular year, because Jen was beating everybody. She was beating the men and the women. Mm -hmm. Well, this meant at the end of the tournament... She was playing very strong players, although she did play me, so, but, okay. And then women who weren't doing well were playing other women who were 2,200, 2,100. So as a consequence of that, Jen, who had five out of nine, five out of eight. Mm -hmm. Five out of eight? Yeah. That's right. No, she had half a point more than me. She had four and a half out of eight. And she was paired up every round, and she played me in the last round. I had four out of eight. If Jen drew the last round, she was the U.S. Women's Champion, $12,000 first place. Mm -hmm. For me, I was in the middle of the tournament, so I was winning like $100 more if I won. Like, it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. Okay, And I had White, and her brother, Greg, and a friend you don't know, Yakov, they bet whether I would give her a draw. Because it doesn't really matter to me, and we're all friends, and she wins the tournament. But I don't, I don't do that. And Greg's like, yeah, Ben doesn't do that. So Greg, Greg bet that I wouldn't give her a draw. And then I did, and I beat her. This is the game I beat her. Okay. When I beat her, I said, do you want to look at the game? And she was very curt, like the wolf. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, I got to prepare for the playoff with Anna, Anna Han, also Anna Khan. She changed her name. Mm -hmm. And Irina Crush. And the, the playoff, which happened later, Anna Han won, which doesn't make any sense because you never heard of her. It's, there's a reason why you haven't heard of her. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I thought Jen was mad at me because I stole like $6,000 from her, basically. Yeah. Okay. So then several years later in Vegas, I was going to the bathroom for my game. And she was, I guess, coming from the bathroom, I guess. And w we looked at each other and I thought she'd like punch me or something. And instead, she stuck her tongue out, and then she kept walking. Then I knew she wasn't mad. Mm -hmm. That's how I knew she wasn't mad. And she's actually the reason I got hired in St. Louis. She got me hired. Yeah. This, this, yeah for uh -huh. the women. Yeah, okay. So she wasn't mad, but she had to prepare for the playoff. Okay. So, all right. So this is the most boring game ever. So we'll get to, the, we'll get to my favorite part. Okay. Now, that's boring. Right? Yeah, um, all right. pretty boring, no? Okay, now I played a move I'm really proud of, and I can't tell you why I'm proud of it. I can't even tell you why it's good. Okay. But I'm really proud of it. All right. I'm really proud of it. I don't understand the move. 
I was I was better then. H3. Okay, now Jen made a mistake. She played king f8, which looks like you walk your king up. Mm -hmm. I played c4. Now she made another mistake. This mistake is based on something a lot of lower rated players do, which is they want to draw when they're playing a higher rated player. And so they trade, 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 like that guy who I thought was Geary's dad earlier in the lecture. Oh, Isn't yeah. It? Okay. And she played a5. Trade everything and draw. Okay. And I took, and now that's that looks good. See, right? You agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. He, she played rook takes. I can't take the b pawn because my rook's hanging, so I take. She can't take with the pawn because I take her bishop. Takes with, takes with the knight. And now it looks like really drawn, like if I take this, she'll take this, then she'll take this, and it's like there's nothing left. So I played knight e5. And this is very funny. This is why king f8 is a bad move. If the king was on g8, okay, I'm not threatening knight d7 check, and I fork her king in her b pawn. Mm -hmm. And that's why she's in trouble now, because I'm threatening this. And my knight defends my pawn, so now I'm threatening this. But if this wasn't check, that's not really a threat. She could just do whatever she wanted. So now she's in trouble. So a5 was a mistake. I think she missed knight e5. Mm -hmm. Now she's going to lose a pawn. So she played king e7 and just gave the pawn away. Kicked my knight out. I attacked her knight. She defended it. Okay. And I have this pawn up endgame, you know, which is pretty blocked. Okay, then she traded, which is bad. And I defended my pawn. She blockaded it. Okay, and then we get to a funny part later. Okay, this is the funny part. Okay, she played rook h5 attacking my pawn. And then I played bishop e2 attacking her rook. Okay. The question is... What do I do if she takes, which she did not? Um, I think you'll enjoy the answer. Yeah? Yeah, it's the most counterintuitive move in chess history. Mm -hmm. That gives you a hint. Let's see. Even, I'm not even convinced the chat's going to get it. I'm not convinced. Let's or, see the chat here. No, I gotta look at it Damn, the second. chat's pretty good. Mm -hmm. See, there's two moves the chat is giving for the same reason, mm -hmm. but one of their but that one doesn't work. They they have the same reason, but they don't understand that one of their things doesn't work and one does. So the ones who are right are lucky. The ones who are wrong are unlucky. So you want to trap the rook. I'm trying to Where can the rook go right now? Um, well, it can go to, let's see, h2. And? Um, h1. Right. So what move defends h2 and h1? Let's see. Oh. Oh, king g1. King g1. That's what I was going to play. Now I'm going to play g3 next move, and that's the end of your rook. Mm -hmm. Rook h3, king g2. Now, half of the chat is saying here, because they want to play king g3, and their rook is defending here. Right. Problem is, if white was, would play king g3 right now, black plays g5. Oh, yeah. So the, the, the pawn attacking the rook, that has more oomph, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's king g1. And I did this against Tony Miles, and that's the score sheet I'm trying to get. One of the greatest games I ever won was against Tony Miles. I don't have the score sheet. It was played in 1988. I'm trying to get the score sheet now on Twitter. I have, I have, I have a guy. It's, it's not going to work, but if it works, I'll have the game, which I don't have. I really like that game. I'll, I'll show that game on stream. Did he day. answer you about it? No, he just said he'd look into it, but I, I don't think okay. he hasn't, you know. It lives in Australia, so. Okay. So Jen didn't take my pawn. She went back here. Okay. And then we continue with our extra pawn. All right. Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. After the game and years later, she thought this was a drawn ending.
Okay. Now she made a very bad move. And I always yell at you when you do this. Even when you're not here, I yell at you. I just start yelling and you don't you don't know I'm yelling at you. Hmm. This is what you do a lot. I'm like, oh my God, stop doing that. Then she did it. So that was good. I haven't met you yet, so it's not your fault. Hmm. So I played E4. What would you do here? I would get mad at you. What would I do? Yeah, here? after E4. I'm not saying you would do it, but if you did do it, I would be mad. And she did do it. She made a move that's typical of low-rated players, and I'm like, ah, oh, very bad move. It's not a move a super grandmaster would even consider. So when you play it, that means not only did you consider it. And we talked about this with the go analogy. When somebody mm -hmm. does something, you focus on what they did, and then you meet it, mm -hmm. right? When I play E4, you don't have to, like, look at E4 and stare at it. I mean, you know, you can make whatever move you want, right? And she took on e4. I wouldn't take. Right, that's really bad what for I, several reasons. I'm not saying I had a good move, but I definitely wouldn't take. Right, that's just terrible. Mm -hmm. Now you've given yourself an isolated pawn. You've opened up this uh, row for my rook, and you went my king go up. Mm -hmm. And again, a lot of people, if you can call them people, they believe... You know, when you're winning, you trade pieces, and when you're losing, it is true you want why to trade you, pawns. Why do you think I would take? That's not a move I would do. I'm always overly concerned about my pawn structure. Okay. There's no way I would. Yeah, no, you, but sometimes when somebody makes a move and you can trade, you trade on the square they just moved. I wouldn't yeah. do that. I yeah. would probably right. go G6, which may not be any okay. good. G6 is fine. I do All that. Right. Two pawns up. Okay, and then she resigned. Now it's like plus seven, I guess. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Something. Some high number. Yeah, it's, it'll get to seven eventually. Yeah. So w when when people who aren't very good look at that game, when I say not very good, I mean like under 2,400. They say, oh, that was a draw and ending and you want to draw an ending and they shake their head. But if like Magnus looked at that game, he would, he would, it would be like, it would be like Star Wars, the, 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 the family guy one where they're all nodding to each other. That's what it would be like. Yeah, that that's how you win. Very very slightly better, then a little better, and every ten moves, like like a clam, it opens up, and then you you feast on the vegan stuff inside. Okay, hang or is on. that an oyster? I don't hang know. Hang on a second. Okay. What? Pig pog pip. Now, why do you think that the only reason I play chess is because Ben forces me to? That's right. That's the only reason. <laughs> I played chess before I even met Ben. Mm -hmm. I played tournament chess. Over the board, like real chess, not just online bullshit chess. <laughs> Before I met Ben. So I get that a lot. So I don't know why. So it's some vibe I give off must be that um, I don't like chess. I'm expressionless. Well, I'm tired. Well, she's thinking. I'm tired. I do get it. It's the expression. I'm tired. I'm very low key. I'm not super hyper. So, I do agree. I give off that vibe, but you weren't playing chess before. Most of them were born, though. But I was. <laughs> I mean, but anyway, no, I like chess a lot. <laughs> they just haven't seen you stream. Terrible. <laughs> hey, twenty five hundred viewers. No, I mean I what? am a little what? bit tired too. That's a lot of viewers for me. Mm -hmm. Let's have a train, and let's all twenty five hundred of you, you know, help the train out by fifty cents or so. All right. Also, fifty cent. I play. I play more chess. All right. This than one's that. a fun one. This one I've already shown on the stream many times. The other ones were too complicated. This is more fun. I told you know Jennifer. I thought you were mad at me, and she was like, "No." You know, years later, many years later. Mm -hmm. Okay. She probably yeah. was mad right after That's the what game. I, was thinking. I yeah. get mad right after. Thanks, Kiff. Thanks, Up Cable. Thanks, Fly Half 2014. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kiff. If, if you want Fly the train half. to start, I'm not saying you do, but if you do, you have to donate a minimum of 100 centidues. That's what Twitch does. That's a Twitch rule. I'm innocent. Thank you, Kiff. You don't ever have to now, apologize and say that's all you have. Now, when the train starts, then you could donate one cent to do, and that helps the train along. Thank you. For the train, you have to donate a hundred cent to do. I don't make but, the rules. Um, I know the rules. Yeah. I need to try to be more like perky, so I don't give off that vibe. I'm just not very perky. <laughs> uh, 
Ah, okay, you know what, what I wanted to say. Uh, okay, <laughs> now let's go. Let's let's go to the squares. Uh, okay, let's go to the beginning of this. <laughs> the body part I was thinking was perky. Okay, so, okay. So this is move 57. This position is a draw. Another train. Yay. Thanks, Seats Boy, Cali Gambler, <laughs> Dr. Goguma, Up Cable, Up Yours. I mean, thank you. 20, wait, we're getting a lot of viewers here. This is crazy. That is, yay. Yeah, this is like Fox News over here. Yay, it's crazy. Yay, viewers. Yay, new viewers and I'm going to give viewers. hydroxychloroquine to everybody who's watching. Right? Tall viewers and short So viewers. the U.S. for no reason gave Brazil like thousands and thousands of hydroxychloroquine and then they're just sitting in a warehouse somewhere. Um, in Brazil, they're just sitting there. Well, they must want it for some reason. Well, yeah, I don't know. Or maybe they were just... There's some polite. crime going on. I don't know what it is, but there's just thousands of bottles of it sitting there in a warehouse. Because it doesn't do anything, so. Mm -hmm. Which know. marriage, pig pug, pip? Yeah. <laughs> I was married before you guys were born. He says, was that game previously shown mm -hmm. between you and Jennifer played prior to your marriage? <laughs> if you didn't buy hard, you Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that Obviously right. new to the stream. Yeah. That's correct. <laughs> Which marriage? Wait, now I have 2,770 viewers. Uh, yay. Even you have to be confused. Yay. Are you confused? So why do you think that's just sitting there in the warehouse? I'm sure they're going to use it. Or, use, use it for what? Oh, why would they take it if they're not going to use it? Unless they're just being So polite. here's what I think. Mm -hmm. I think Trump doesn't care whether it works. Bolsonaro may have thought that it worked, and they sent him a lot. Then they're like, okay, this stuff don't work. So now they're like, what do we do? Oh, it's just sitting there. I mean, Yay. they both have to know it doesn't work now, but they both claim that it works. Yay, Pat. So I don't know. Pat, See, if you're, in my, if you're in my stream a lot, if, you're, if you are... Yeah. That people think Bolsonaro is much worse than Trump. So if you have like like the two worst people in the world and they're hydroxychloroquining it up, I don't know. Hey, you're missing stuff. No, I know. Pat gave uh, ten subs. Oh, Freddie Potts. Go Freddy Pat. Pat. It's Pat. That's like it's Pam, but it's Pat. I already think Pat, but I didn't. Go Pat. Pat. Chicken blender, hundred cent to do's. Freddie Potts are hundred cent to do's. Everybody's going crazy today. Yeah. Yay! Thank when you. I ask the chat who's worse, Trump or Bolsonaro, they all say Bolsonaro. Man, they don't like Bolsonaro in my stream. Yeah, they, they I don't, don't know like him. About him. They don't like him. Yay, yeah. seats, boy, <clears throat> six. Bolsonaro is the worst person in the world by far. This guy said, like by far. He also he had COVID. Okay. Yeah, and his wife, I think, may have had it. What did know. he do? I don't know anything about it. He's him. the head of Brazil. I know, but I still don't yeah. know about him. They don't like Bolsonaro. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How can he be worse? No, no. Everybody, no, no. Everybody on my stream says he's worse. That knows them both. He's a child molester. A lot of people like don't know who Bolsonaro is, so they don't say he's worse. <laughs> if they know who he is, they say he's worse than Trump. All right. I mean, I'm, I, I don't, all I know about Bolsonaro is what you guys in my stream say. So I'm thinking he's not too good, because man, in my stream you guys don't like him. I don't know, I don't know who you guys are, but you don't like him. Okay. Nobody in my streams ever said, "Oh, I like Bolsonaro. He's great." There are people in my stream who like Trump. There are not people in my stream who like Bolsonaro. Mm -hmm. I never met one. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, he's a good. He's great. I, I never heard that. I am Brazilian. He is bad. Aww. Somebody's got to like him. Somebody. His mom. You know, I don't know. His brother. 50 cents to do's. He's the worst. Nobody is worse than Trump. What? It's a dump. I have friends from Brazil. He's bad. Yeah, they don't They don't like Bolsonaro in my stream. Mm -hmm. well, Suspicious to, Tissue subscribe. I'll have to Google it. Anyway, Bolsonaro and Trump are like that, son. Yeah, they... They, they really are? Yeah. And that's how they got the warehouse. I think so. Yeah, they, 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 they like each other. Yeah. Yeah, I think Trump wishes he was Bolsonaro. God damn. Five dollars. Nice guy, Eddie. Thank you. Maybe Putin has a way. I saw Bolsonaro too. kick a stray dog. What is he? Uh, oh. You know the other guy? I can't even tell if he's kidding. Yeah, this guy said worse than Hitler. Am I supposed to allow that? Yeah, why not? Okay. Now this is a draw, and the way to draw is the way to draw. The way to draw is to do nothing. Yeah. And he did nothing for like thirty moves. Then he got cocky. Mm -hmm. Or as they say in Family Guy, you got penisy, not cocky. <laughs> that's that's from uh, you know the Star Wars one. Okay. Okay. 
So I'm black. Pay attention. I'm paying attention. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. By the way, for people watching, if he takes this, this is winning for black. What's the only move that wins for black? You got four legal moves. One of them wins. Um, Go train. King, Go Pat. Go Pam. King G4? Correct. Yeah. King G4 is correct. So he didn't do that. He, he moved his rook away. So this isn't too interesting. Okay. Now, he decided to be cute. You watching? Mm -hmm. You watch. I'm watching. Okay. In this position, he played the cute move. Not recommended by Nigel Short. Not recommended. So he played the cute move. Not recommended by Short. McJurgle gifted a sub. Fly half gave 100 cents to dues. That's correct. Nigel Short says stalemate should be a win. Right? Mm -hmm. So Nigel Short didn't recommend that move. Because if I take it, it's stalemate. Oh, okay. So then I would win according to Nigel. Right. So that's the cute move. I went here and he did the cute move. Again. G3. Mm -hmm. Again. And now he can't go here because I can take it. Because mm -hmm. it's not stalemate. Oh, yeah. So he moved away. So he moved away. And I played F4. Now he made nine question mark move. Because there's a lot of Germans watching. Nine. You ready? So every move draws. If I turn this thing on lines, draw. Mm -hmm. Every move draw. No winning plan. But he decided to be cute again. Mm -hmm. As they say in Britain, he was too clever by half. Right? You better learn that, Dominic, because it's you live in Scotland. He played Rook F3 triple question mark. Mm -hmm. Black to play and win. 149 cents to dues. Let's see. What's wrong with uh, rook d1? Rook d1. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if he takes, I go rook d2, and then I take his rook. Mm -hmm. So he played here to be tricky, which is not tricky. Now, every move wins. It doesn't matter what move I make, I win. Mm -hmm. Every move wins. So I, it doesn't matter. What I, I did that, but it doesn't matter. And then he resigned. After here, not only does this win, this also wins. They both win. When the king's of the sixth rank, you're winning. Mm -hmm. This is easier because then I can do that. Right. So rook f3 was him being cute, but it wasn't check. If it was check, I have to move my king, but it's not check, so I can go here and win. Yeah. That was like the only losing move. So the guy's drawing for 30 moves, and then he thinks he's funny. <laughs> and then I, the game's over. I win. If yeah. it worked, it was pretty cute. Yeah, but you could, you don't be cute. You, you got, you know, you kidding me? His endless was inefficacious. Anyway, he's, his ring's about 2200 So after that, it was $21.99. All right, Cooked gave 50 cents. Good, hey, good. Cooked. All right, and then his goose was cooked. Oh, there's another one. Hmm? Did he do it more than once? Probably. Oh, maybe not. What? I thought I saw it twice. Nah, you, I think you, it was an illusion. Imagining. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Imagine all the donations. Okay, now we're going to look at my game with Shanky to finish the stream. Because it's always good to be shanky. Shanky? Yeah. Shankland? Yeah. Aw. Aw, what? 87 moves. He probably doesn't like that name. Everybody calls him shanky. Oh, they do? Yeah. Oh, sweetheart, he does like it. I don't know if he likes it. That's that's his name. Oh. He's shanky. I had never heard yeah. that. All right, we'll start somewhere. We'll start at move, I don't know, here? Yeah, all right. No, no. Not even halfway done. Okay. So 
Shanklin wants to play Rook D1 mate. Okay. Okay. But it's pinned. Yeah. So I can't do it. So he played Rook to D2. And if I queen, mm -hmm. then he perpetuals. Check, 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 check. Okay, although I could actually, yeah. And that, and I can't move my king up here or here because mate and mate. Okay. So then, so, so check, 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 mm -hmm. check, check, check. Okay. So I don't want to draw because I'm playing Shankland, right? So I play queen takes rook check. Now there's no perpetual. And then I queen. And I have to get out of there. Okay. And he checks. I check forking his king and rook. Um, wait a minute. Okay, yeah. And he has to go here. I mean, I was going to say he has to go here, mm -hmm. but he doesn't have to because he has knight check winning my queen if I take his rook. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I play king e1. Now I can take his rook. He can't play rook takes pawn check. Rook takes pawn because queen a3 check wins his rook. Okay, yeah. Okay, yay, the train, 13 subs, 2,000 bits, Papa John's. Okay, now... We're not even halfway through the game yet. And I'm very patient. I'm an old man. I was an old man this game, and this game was a long time ago. And I moved my king to the right of them, to the left of them, shattered and sundered, and eventually I won. Okay. So somebody's asking a question. Yeah. PHL197 yeah. wasn't sure what mate. Was a perpetual check equals mate? No, it equals a draw. So I don't want to draw, oh, so okay. I didn't let him do that. Now, in this game, nothing happens, and eventually I win. Mm -hmm. When the game ended, he said, this is a dead draw, this. Mm -hmm. He's losing. And then he said, some movie he made later was the worst movie he's ever made in his life. Okay? So I put on the engine, and the engine said that was the best move. So as usual, he was right. Okay. So I squeezed him and squeezed him, and I pet him, and I squeezed him. Okay. He blocked my pawn pretty good. You gotta give, give him that. Yeah. So I try to win over here. Mm -hmm. Try to win over there. Then I'm like, ah, that's not working. So then I gave up. And I went the other way. See? Then I went the other way. He didn't give up. No. Well, well, he thinks it's a dead draw. Then I played b7, confusing the audience. If he takes with a rook, queen takes his mate. If he takes with the knight, that's illegal. Mm -hmm. All right. So he plays rook check. Then he takes, and I win his knight finally. And then he's playing for stalemate, but I didn't stalemate him, so he resigned. If king here, I have queen here, mate. If king here, queen here, mate, and rook here, mate, and I'm up a lot of material. So I, I won just like moving my king around and squeezing and like that. The last 30 moves of the game, the engine says I'm plus five. And then I won. And he said it was a dead draw, and then he blundered somewhere. But the move he said was a blunder was the right move, and he just lost. So good analysis by him. But the idea is, in these endings, the reason you may make a mistake with either color is you're not patient. Nothing's gonna happen. I'm gonna move my king up. If it doesn't work, I'll move my king over there. If it doesn't work, move my king over there. I have a passed pawn. I'm, I don't have to win right away. I have to avoid knight forks that win my queen. If he can like move his knight and fork my king and queen, I gotta avoid that. Otherwise, I can just win at my leisure. Yeah. Yay, brownie. Brown. What I remember about that game more than winning it was him saying it was a dead draw when he was just always lost. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, yeah Raf nine. That game was played, I think, in two thousand seven in your favorite city, hmm? Tulsa, Oklahoma. Hmm. Boah. <laughs> now, for a million dollars, a trillion dollars, the year before was in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Where was the U.S. championship? The year before it was in Tulsa. Right. I'll give you a hint. It was in Oklahoma, but not in Tulsa. Is it a city I've no, I know? Well, about. that's not clear. You've heard of Oklahoma City, right? Yeah. Not there. 
Um, so not in Oklahoma City and not Tulsa. Yeah, I don't know. This is why we're very happy the St. Louis Chess Club exists. Can you name any other cities in Oklahoma? Let's look at the chat. Norman, that's a city, but no. Oh, snap. Spencer said it couldn't have been a dead draw because then he would have resigned. Oh, snap. That's oh, correct. Yeah, Very good. I know yeah. That. Stillwater, Spencer's as somebody one. pointed out. Yeah. Oh. Stillwater. Um, yeah, I don't know that. I don't right. Know no, nobody. Yeah. That's what, and the prizes were like $10 first, $9 second. Yeah. Now the prizes are good. <laughs> I wish I was kidding. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. The prizes were no good. This, this tournament was in the basement of a hotel. Like in the basement, they had like convention space. Mm. It was like a Ramada and it was like room, like barely enough room for like, they didn't have enough room for the players of the tournaments. They were in two rooms. The rooms could fit like 10 people mm. and they were not, not nice. Yeah. And who won that tournament? The one in Tulsa. Yuri Shulman. Okay. And that's where Josh Friedel got his GM title. He drew the last round. He got the GM title, and Shulman won the tournament. That worked out pretty well for them. Mm -hmm. Now, I have a funny story from that tournament. There was a rule you could not offer a draw before move 30. Okay? And they said, unless you have a really good reason. Like, I don't know, you're dying. I don't know good reasons. So in round one, Fedorowicz is playing Shulman. And F Shulman offers a draw like I move 13. And Fedorowicz goes to the organizers and he says, now you guys have a, this rule. And they're like, yeah. He says, I have a good reason. He says, he's better than me. And he said, he has a good reason. I have a better position. And they said, okay. And they let him agree to a draw. Mm. Yeah, I have a good reason. He's better than me. That was a good reason. <laughs> that's, that's a true story. That happens. Strange. Yeah, I have a good reason. He's a good player. I don't want to play him. Yeah. Legit. It's not jokes. That's what happened. It is jokes, but it's still what happened. Yeah. Oh, was... I played in a U.S. championship in in San Diego and or La Jolla. They had mm -hmm. one after the other, so I don't remember which one it was. And then the game ended. I moved like 23. And the arbor went up and he said, you can't agree to a draw before move 30. Rawr. And the guy said, I lost. Can I lose in less than 30 moves? Oh, snap. And the arbiter felt like all bad about that. Yeah. Who was the organizer of the tournament you were talking in about? In Oklahoma? Twin brothers. The Berry brothers, they're bankers. Okay. And they're both like 1900, 2000 at chess. I don't know which one is which. They actually look alike. I played one in the U.S. Open. Hey, my laugh is not fake. What? Person. Fake laugh is killing her. <laughs> killing me, Jerry. Yeah. How could you? Fine gold with three Ds, that would be Karen. <laughs> Boris Spassky Averbach. Love the classics. That's right. What's the best informator? I'm the best informator. Now, all right, more end games. Because I skipped some because I, you know, I said this was the last one. I lied. Mm. Okay, there, there, or there. Okay, we'll do this one, which I've shown before, mm -hmm. and I'm going to ask you, like, one position. Can I try not to learn one, two, three? All right. So, let's see. All right. This position is better for white, and I played this, which is a bad move. And then I took, and I thought I was winning here, but I'm not. Mm. Okay. And there's some more bad moves, but I'm going to skip all that. All right. Okay. This position's better for white. Plus one, plus two. Not sure if he's winning or not. I don't know. And here my opponent blundered. All right? Okay. So I have a lot of past pawns everywhere, right? The charge of the light brigade. It's the right of them, to the front of them. All right. And he played D2, triple question mark. Triple. It's like the triple Lindy. Who was the only actor who could land the triple Lindy? Actor? Yeah. Who was the actor? Um, Let's see if the chat knows. Chat 
Copeland. Yeah, he got it. There we go. They're getting it. Uh, Rodney Dangerfield. Oh, what movie? <laughs> uh, Back to School. Okay. <laughs> the swim coach says, there was this guy who did the triple A. That was me. And then they show him doing it. It's very funny. Uh, they, have to, saw, they have to cut away a lot. I saw that a long time ago. Yeah. Very suspicious movie. All right. But I just want to point out that D2 is triple okay, question mark. So that's mark. a bad move. Triple question mark. Um, For a trillion dollars, what's Miles Artiman's nickname? Artie? No, Smiley. Okay. That's why it was a trillion dollars. It was tough. Uh -huh. All right. For another trillion dollars, what does he drink? There's a drink he really likes. If he goes to a restaurant, that's what he orders to drink. Um, for a trillion dollars? Ooh. Is it, can, can I narrow it down, alcoholic or non-alcoholic? Non-alcoholic. Um, and it's what he always drinks? Mm -hmm. Milk. Correct. Really? Yeah, now we're rich. <laughs> it's funny because he's smiley. He always gets milk. Yeah. All right, see you guys. <laughs> Bye, we have a trillion dollars now. Yeah. All right, D2 triple question mark. That I made a move and he resigned. What move did I make? All right. Well, I have to think about it. I have to go to the bathroom and I need a Perrier. So tickle first. Hey, no, don't do that. <laughs> or I'm leaving. And then I'll come back, scream real loud and scare you. I'm not going to yeah, know. I'm scream really loud. You think the, the, the roach will? I, I kicked the roach. The roach is, in fact, dead. You kicked the roach. I'm going to call PETA. We have a dead roach in the hall yeah. here. And... I was afraid to touch it because sometimes they pretend to be dead, but it's been there for like two days. So I touched it with my foot earlier and it didn't move. <laughs> ben refuses. I have to kill all the bugs in the house. I live in the house with three males and none of them are man enough to kill the bugs. I have to kill all the bugs. That And now I'm going to stop talking and try to solve this problem. <laughs> All right, so what is the good move? I can't look at Chad anymore because I know you guys already figured it out. And so, let me see. I don't understand why I can't just queen. The queen will go there. One, two. That obviously can't be the answer. Is there a check? Did you solve it? No, I don't understand why the e white uh, can't just queen. Or, like, go ahead and okay, push so, that Okay, so let's go. Well, I mean, but that can't be it. Let's go. Because it... Okay, F7. Okay. Oh. <laughs> then you queen and then me. Right. All right. Okay, all right, well. Now you know why. Let's try again. Um... Where's all my sponsors? Where'd they go? Mm. That is correct. I am thirsty. <laughs> Why do you live in Atlanta? That sounds boring. COVID. Gotta live somewhere. We got to live where our chess center is. So what are your options? Well, I mean, I guess king e2. Okay, and what's the other option? Um, Four dollars. Thanks, Xenoid. You're the best. You're number one. You're Xenoid one. Papa John. Oh, well. Oh, yeah, you could go king, e, um, king c2. Mm -hmm. So he, he saw that I could queen and get mated, mm -hmm. and he saw I could play king e2, and that would transpose into what he should have done. Mm -hmm. So he thought he'd give himself the extra mating chance, but he didn't see king c2, and then he just resigns. He can't do anything now. No, I just queen, and he, can't, he never does mm -hmm. anything. 
Yeah. Right, he didn't see king c2. Yeah, so he should play king c3, and then check, and then check. And this is what should happen. And then white's better because white's up two pawns, but black can take things in check, and mm -hmm. you know, white's better. Yeah. I don't know if white's winning or not. But yeah, instead he played he played d2, and then the game ended in one move, and then he resigned. So the whole game was wasted. Like The game was interesting before that. There was a lot of back and forth. Now there's no back and forth. Yeah. And then, and then he had milk. <laughs> Sock wearer says, "Does GM Benjamin Feinkel respond to fans?" <laughs> I usually prefer AC, but I'll take a fan. <laughs> Hoisted on his Jean Luc Picard. That is correct. Yeah, I was worried that the Roach was playing possum. That's why I waited, <laughs> waited a couple of days. The waiting I, was the hardest part. And then I kicked, you know, nudged it earlier. It's definitely dead. What? All right. Yeah, he responds to fans. What do you want to ask, sock wearer? Roaches are the worst. Did you have a question that from got Armenia? Missed? Miles Arteman? No. <laughs> Miles Arteman is the whitest guy I've ever met. It's probably because of the milk. What? Yeah. Why do you torture Karen by making her kill roaches? I don't torture. Well, I do, but that's separate. Uh, I make her kill. Ro I don't make her kill the roaches. Oh, I'm a vegan. Well, I did tell them while you were gone that I'm the only bug killer in the household. Well, I'm a vegan. I don't kill bugs. Yeah, so it's you know. How do I have this? But I already have a top. Yeah. The mysteries of life. <laughs> um, the safe word is banana. Are you worth over a million dollars? <laughs> Who, me or her? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> mm. A vegan can kill them, just not eat them. That is correct. The top's from another bottle. That is also correct. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mainly, etc. I do all the I, it's, I do all the manly jobs. Isn't Pops, she vegan so too? She's not. It's absolutely true. I do fix Ben's chair. I fix. I kill the bugs. I do. This channel is 420 friendly, and the guy wants to know why there's no roaches. Truth hurts. <laughs> yeah. I always think that, but I know I'm, I'm innocent. Yeah. All right. I don't want to show you more end games because I'm exhausted. Aww. So we'll do something else. We have six minutes. Mm -hmm. we'll, do, we'll do some other end game thing. Also, Papa John's. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll give Karen a puzzle. Ready? Yeah. Okay, there's several answers to this puzzle. Okay. There's, f uh, f how many do I know? How many answers do I know? I know four answers to the puzzle. I think there's more than four. Okay, one, two. Oh, wait, I know three answers. Okay, there's three answers I know for sure. Right? Okay. Okay. Whatever move white makes, black makes the same move. Okay. So if white plays here, black plays here. Mm -hmm. And if you're like, why does black play there? Because that I'm telling you that's what he's doing. That, that's what that's the puzzle. So if you go here, they go there. Okay. If you go here, they go there. It's guaranteed. That's what's don't don't be like, why are they doing that? That's what they're doing. Okay. That's what sure. they're doing. Okay. White to move and made in four moves. There's three answers that I know of. Okay. So whatever move you make, they're going to make the same move. All right, now I can't look at Chad anymore. You can because they... They're they, going to they, know it. They, they might know the answer already. They might. Yeah. If they don't, they're not going to get it. So, so in gonna... four moves? Yeah, so you'll make yeah. a move, then Black makes a move, and then I move four. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. So like if you go here, what's Black going to do? Um, Knight C6. Correct. Now, I have to think about this for a minute. I'm not going to... You can think about it for an hour. That's, okay. that's a complicated so you puzzle. Talk to them and I'll right, exactly. Right. Yeah, Scholar's Mate is a mate, violin and viola, because black can play king d8, because obviously black's queen isn't on d8, because white played... So So this this is a very common answer, is the Scholar's Mate, mm -hmm. okay, which is not mate, because the king has d8. Okay. So that, that's not an answer. All right, I need to look at it. Mm -hmm. Let's see. You guys can all carry on. <laughs> Man Moth, are you ashamed of yourself? Ah, he was ashamed of himself when I said it. He said, oh, I suck. That's good. 
as long as you're ashamed of yourself. I know three answers to this puzzle. There could be more than three, but I know three. But there could be more. Let's see. Yeah, nobody knows the answer in the chat. No, they're putting answers that are wrong, or they're like, I don't know. All right, well. It's not easy to figure out. Either you've seen the puzzle before and you remember the answer, or you're trying to figure it out, but you won't be able to. So that's, you know, that's, that's what it is. Matt Frankie's sort of right, except for the etc. Yeah. What if it is illegal for black to copy? What's happening here? What? Daniel Moreno. Mm -hmm. Terrible. Man, Rain IYH, every move you wrote was illegal and nonsensical. What? What are you doing? <laughs> you, you, you just wrote it again. What? There, there. What? <laughs> okay, so you wrote F4, here, 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 Queen H5 mate, which is mate, but you can't jump over your Epon. I mean, but you're sort of right. It's just can't you can't do it. I think that's what you wrote because every move you wrote was illegal. So yeah. Chicken blunder. What you wrote was more illegal. Here's chicken blunder's answer. Well, I'm trying to think. Hold on, but his answer is funny. All right. Then he wrote queen h five mate, which is illegal, and it's not mate. If it was legal, it's yeah. also illegal and not mate because king e seven. Mm. All right. Good answers except for one thing. Yeah, Daniel Moreno's right. All right. What you wrote is it made me loge because black can play g6 and black can play king e7. And that was three moves instead of four. And I have some more. I'm mad about other stuff too. I hold uh, David Pakman responsible for Fisher's mental illness. That's right, Mark. Yeah. You know what David Patman was? As a joke. Hmm. How much better? What? No Scandies on my stream. The rule is whatever move white makes, black makes the same move. So if white plays h4, black plays h5. Every move. And white mates on move four with those parameters. Confusing the audience. Yeah, violin and viola is correct. Net node is not correct because the bishop can take your knight. That's not mate. I copied, but isn't that right? That is right. Yeah. You didn't write the whole answer out, but you're still right. This reminds me of this Stuart Rachel type. That's correct. Puzzles. Right. I, just, I can show you one of the answers. That way no, you can try to find the other one. I mean, um, I would like to look at it for a moment. Yeah, but uh, I plan on dying in the next 10 years. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't think, you know. Does somebody already solve it? Mm hmm. Yeah. Also, somebody said, will I write a book or do a DVD? I have DVDs and I've written a book. So, yes. That is correct. Uh, your answer, which was this, then you were going to play queen here and here, but black has to go there. So you, you can't, you can't, it's, it's illegal. Mm -hmm. So your, your answer is right, but it's illegal. He was like, queen takes here, queen takes here, and then mate, but it's, queens yeah. are jumping over each other. You can't do that. Peter Beal, your answer requires 400 moves. It's a four-move answer. Your answer is right, except you, it takes like 10 moves. It was four moves. Pat Buchanan is one of the correct answers. That's right. All our viewers went away because we're not on Chess TV anymore. Now we have zero viewers. And that's still a lot Yeah, we viewers. lost 1,000 viewers. Man, <laughs> harsh. Well... That's still a lot of viewers. It is. It's true. 
I don't know. I can't do it quickly. All right. I'll show you one answer. Sure. Maybe you show me that. Okay, here's one. And I, how about Here? don't show us all the answers? No, so I won't. I can think I won't. about it. I won't. <laughs> when I'm not You so watching? Bad. Yeah. Oh, okay. There's one answer. I know three answers. That's one of the ones mm -hmm. I know. All right. Well, I'll have to think about it when I'm not so tired. <laughs> Everything Tigress wrote was illegal, and it's not made. And it's illegal. So the moves are not legal, and if they were legal, it wouldn't be made. Hey, Master John. I've never been so mad. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you why people are confused. Yes. Watch. Let me show you. Watch this. Okay. People think answers like this are right. They're like, well, that's mate because he has to go there. So that's mate. It has to be checkmate, like checkmate that you know, like in a real game. Not that you've ever done one, but you know. So they're like, if black has to go here, because that's the rules, and black can't go there, that's checkmate. That's what they're thinking. Mm -hmm. And also, they always suggest illegal moves to do it, which I don't get that part. But, all right. Lords of Acid is what you said was illegal and not checkmate. You, you can't jump your queen over the other person's queen. We already discussed this. Mm -hmm. You can't create... Right, he's playing queen f3, then he's playing queen f7. But black gets to move too, not just you. So if, if you do this, mm -hmm. okay, it, it, black's going to go here. So you can't jump over his queen. And if you could, it wouldn't be mate. Mm -hmm. you, you, your answer is five moves, Ben, Ben. I said four. Hmm. I, I said four. He said you did five moves. Boom. <laughs> well, maybe if you're a GM, you can. Maybe you're right, man, Moth. I don't know. Yeah. I could show you another one that has the same answer. Then you can figure out the last one you're on. Well, then you're now taking what? all the choices. But this is the same. Way. This is the same. All right. Remember how it was queen here, queen here? Yeah. Now, now it's queen here, queen here. It's the oh, same. It's, it's the, the same, same thing. Yeah. Right. Okay. Then there's one more. That does not involve D4, D5. Doesn't okay. involve that. All right. Well, let me try to mm -hmm. figure it out. What Do are we talking about, Pat? Chess. Chess. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's correct. E3. Yours isn't mate because if you play E3, that means your opponent plays E6, so it's not mate. This is this is his answer, but that's not me because I go here. Mm. Nice try, then. Trying is the first step to failure. Yeah, that's right, Pat. It's Pat. There's three answers I know of. I showed Karen two of the answers. On the next stream, she'll be working 24 hours till the next stream. Then she'll show the answer, right? Mm -hmm. I'll try to solve it. I'd, yeah. I, I never did solve that other one. I already I, forgot what it was. The Stuart Rachel's one. This is the best puzzle ever. There's a lot of great Tormented puzzles. me where you had to yeah. made them. Mm -hmm. Rook D. I torment two, you. maybe. Or yeah. Rook C, I can't remember. Now, the greatest puzzle ever is this one. Although it's not. I just I just like it a lot. Me. That's my favorite puzzle. Mm -hmm. Yay. All right, it's after 11, mm -hmm. so we should stop. I'm tired, and I'm also hungry. Yeah, but you ate yesterday. You want this leftover garbage? No. But I made it sound good, <laughs> right? Yeah, except for one thing. I wouldn't want that fresh. Right. Well, I, called, I said leftover garbage, yeah. All right, tomorrow's Wednesday. When do I stream Wednesday? I think 9 to 11. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 to 11. Yeah. So are you going to stream before that? I don't know, because I have to take my dad to the doctor. That's at 8 a.m. I have to go back and get my dad in the afternoon. That's at 11, 2 mm -hmm. p.m. So, so the answer is maybe. The answer is maybe. I'll have to no. see how the day goes. Maybe means no, if you have a wife or a mom. That, that's <laughs> what it means. Yeah. I just have to see. Yeah. That's correct. What's the solution? You'll never know. You'll have to figure it out. Well, I'm going to tell them the solution, because I don't want them to like be all night without knowing the solution. The solution is...